Hello everyone and welcome back to the Runeterra Academy Junior Division. I am Tiger. I'm here with Miles David as per usual. We're into playoffs, everyone. The best of fives have arrived. Oh yeah, definitely. Now is the time, you know, this is the time where you have to prove yourself, especially in the best of five format where you have to be able to adapt, adjust, and make sure that you have an edge over your opponent. And yeah, we'll see if these two teams who are coming up will have what it takes to advance into the semifinals. Right now, we do have Air Esports Revival versus Omega Gaming Unknown. This should be a good one, Tiger. Yeah, and uh, this season we've got single elimination. So whoever loses this matchup today, You're done up. for the season. So a uh, winner most likely going to be up against BVC, which is a daunting task, but... Uh, you got to go through the best if you want to win, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. That's uh, how usually how tournaments go. <laughs> you, of course, usually you'd, you'd prefer to have momentum on your side, and momentum is what you need, especially if you're going to be fighting against the, those guys. BBC, probably the premier team in junior division right now. And all right, we're getting into draft already, so not too much time for an introduction, but here we go, guys. Yeah, well, before we get into draft, I think we should mention just a little bit about the teams. We've got Omega Gaming Unknown coming in with uh, having lost more individual games than they won throughout the regular season, but still coming away with the fifth seed. And then we have on the red side, starting out the fourth seed, Aerie Sports Revival, who was in place for second seed, but then lost last week versus Enigma Reapers, uh, and then got bumped down to fourth, so... Now we're getting into the draft, Miles. Yep, yep, definitely. I mean, both these teams are pretty close together when it comes to the standings right now. But regarding gameplay, we were talking about it uh, before the broadcast started, right? Where we kind of expected Air Esports Survival to be the better team overall uh, when it comes down to it. Because we know the potential that these guys have can be very good once things get going. And we're going to see more prior... And we're going to see a few changes, I guess, to the playoffs meta, which will probably... Uh, you know, at this higher level of play in the junior division, we'll probably start to uh, follow the world's meta, which is we see a lot of graves, we see a lot of uh, we see a lot of enchanter support. So maybe we're gonna see that trickle down into the matchup we have here. But it's gonna be the Viego first pick from Omega Gaming Unknown. So interesting stuff. Uh, it could still be flexed to a lane, but probably gonna go into the jungle. Yeah, and I think it's important to touch on that because I think Worlds picks are important to take a look at, but you have to also remember that Worlds is on 11.19. We are now on 11.21. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Got that's fair. Some, uh, that's fair. To some late game marksmen, I think, that uh, changed it up a little bit. I mean, we're seeing the Kaisa here already. Kaisa Nautilus, a pretty strong bot lane combination. And then it looks like we're seeing clear priorities on opposite side of the maps from these two teams, Omega Gaming Unknown, going straight to the top side with the Viego Graves combination, uh, while we see Air Esports Revival already picking up the bot lane. Oh yeah, definitely. And well, you're talking about how some late game marksmen got uh, a little bit buff. Well, we kind of have that and we also don't. It's going to be Kaisa and Atlas, a classic combination, very strong in lane, can go for an all-in play, but not really the type of pick that you want to see go late game unless the team fights are super, super fractured. And right now, it's going to be Jinx picked up for the side of Omega Gaming Unknown. So very strong scalers on their side so far. And we'll see what Ooh. Air decides to respond with. Echo for economical. Okay, it's the of course. same of safe course. champion. You of love course, to you know. see it. Hopefully you want to start get, strong yeah hopefully we'll get some pop off plays there i was i was thinking to myself pick malphite pick malphite you already got viego graves jinx is a great malphite game could be yeah, ramus that's, that's true that's true i'm but, not sure about the ramus i i guess maybe uh i mean sure it could work yeah it could be fine if it's full ad but malphite definitely would be a good a good pick here Graves probably gonna go to the top lane not mistaken uh he's a very popular pick up there right now and can sustain himself super strong and easily can scale up into the late game. We look at the bench right now. Oh, here we go. We're talking about the world's meta. Lulu and Yumi just taken out of the board. They know Kaisa and Nautilus will struggle against those two picks. So they decide to get that out of the way immediately. But there are still some enchanters that could be picked up, you know. There is still the Karma that is available if they want to pair Jinx up with it. 
But on the other side, it's going to be the Xin Zhao, one of the premier junglers at the moment, along with the Yasuo being taken out of the field. Uh, interesting that they decided to take that out, considering that looks like they already have their 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 mid laner. But Echo Jungle could still be a thing, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, but I would be surprised if Economical isn't the one piloting that one. Yeah, and I'm wondering if we're gonna see Oreo Murderers Thresh here. I think only has been played once in this split so far. But I think that Thresh Jinx is a pretty great lane. You could also go with something more defensive, like a Braum we've seen multiple times. Or or potentially towards the Morgana that we've seen from him. It will be the Braum, it looks like. So I think that, that that really works well with having multiple auto attackers. You got the Graves. You got even Viego likes to go for some on-hit sort of stuff. And now maybe a mid, uh, mid lane mage would be where I'm expecting them to go. Uh, yeah. Something uh, like, well, let's see what they yeah. go with here. Maybe a Syndra. Syndra could work. Maybe a Victor, honestly. That could also work and scale up as well. It's going to be Mordekaiser. So this Ooh, might end up Graves being... Uh, yeah, it might end up being Graves mid, uh, I believe. So unless Viego goes mid and Graves goes jungle. It's a very, it's a very, very interesting sort of flexus that Omega Gaming Unknown is is uh, designed to pick in order to keep their cards close to their chest so they're going to be able to play the matchups that they do want to play and right now air esports survival they have the counter pick they decided to opt for red side uh they specifically requested it so we'll see what they decide to go for counter pick it will be the yone so this is probably going to be an echo jungle in the end ah uh, that will mean that uh, unless it's economical moving over to the jungle i think that we will be not seeing economical echo again which is unfortunate but uh still i think a good draft decision here to flex it around a little bit i mean i'm not sure how the echo graves matchup quite works out i think that graves is very popular into uh ad sort of matchups uh, so I think that the Yone might be a little bit of self counter picking here. Uh, I haven't checked the stats on that, so that could be totally wrong. Uh, but I do think that looking between the two comps, Omega Gaming Unknown clearly is focused on getting the carries ahead and then focusing on whoever has the early advantage and snowballing them to a victory. I mean, a uh, Mordekaiser lead, very easy to convert you get jinx ahead then you're burning towers you're burning objectives you got viego ahead you're getting resets throughout the fights and then on the other side we've got a classic front to back team fight comp with airy sports revival and i think uh very easy to execute there so we'll see if they're able to do so oh yeah definitely i mean i'd, I'd say it's harder for an adc like kaisa to be able to execute with this kind of with this kind of comp at least uh you know it's gonna be hard to be isolating targets especially with brahm making sure that the kaisa is interrupted a lot then she can get stunned up by briego there's also the smoke chain to worry about so kaisa definitely has to be worried about going in at the right time do you die if he's gonna be able to do it he should be able to delete at least jinx and possibly viego the problem will be you know, Mordekaiser and Brom. If if Kaiser gets trapped by the Mordekaiser, I don't think she's gonna win that one, that one v one. Plus, the armor stacking from the Grave is gonna be useful. Even though there's a bit of magic damage from the Kaiser, I still wouldn't favor her chance in a one v one with Eye Patch Monkey on this Graves. So, I know you pick you pick the Kaiser Nautilus. It's not really my favorite favorite bot lane. It you know it it's there. It works, I guess. It uh it's uh definitely one of the standard bot lanes that you could go for, but. When it comes to the big uh, team fights, I'm not sure if she'll be able to be. I'm not sure if she'll be able to go in and delete someone. Yeah, it would be really hard to do from behind. So I'm looking to Airy Sports Revival to look for early advantages in the bot lane because you picked up that Nautilus. Nautilus is a pretty strong laning champ. You can get in even level one. You can go for stuff with Nautilus. Mm -hmm. And I think that if they're able to get Biu Yu Dai ahead on this Kai'Sa, then it will be looking like a really good pick. I think it still holds true what you're saying about the Mordekaiser, uh, be being able to 1v1 Kai'Sa in almost any circumstance. But if you get like a, a tornado from Yone onto the back line, you get a Call of the Forge God that hits multiple members, and then Kai'Sa dashing into the, your back line, blowing up your Jinx then all of a sudden the Kaisa pick is uber useful because now you've blown up whoever has the gold advantage 
for Omega Gaming Unknown in a scenario where they have only one of their people ahead, uh, then you're able to do that. And then Kaisa is able to carry out the rest of the fight. But as you say, sure. that's easier said than done with a Braum on the enemy team. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much the thing. The problem is I don't really... I don't know. I don't really, I don't really think that... Wait. Actually, I think you made my point for me. The Brahm is the one on the enemy team. Is there any support and can completely stop the engage from happening? So, gonna be looking to Oreo Murderer to be able to protect the Jinx, protect the Graves, or uh, and be to be the key uh, to the, be the key protector, to be key vanguard for the rest of his team to not get exploded. Mostly, we'll how well that plays out. I mean, on the other side, there's still a lot of outplay factors. Ryuji and economical, of course, on the Yone and the Echo. Many of ways to be able to outplay your opponent. There also Kaisa. With the way that she can go in with the killer instinct at an unexpected angle so they definitely have ways to get into the back line but they have to find the right opportunities and if they don't they could find themselves just getting out fought in the end because of the amount of damage the amount of sustained damage that uh, graves mordekaiser jinx and viego can output yeah well with all that said we're gonna go into a short intermission and on the other side we're gonna have game number one of omega gaming unknown versus air esports revival
Welcome on to the Rift, everyone. It's time for game number one. On the blue side, we've got Omega Gaming Unknown. On the red side, we have got Air Esports Revival. And Miles, it looks like it's shaping up to be a pretty exciting early game. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm not sure about early game. It's just a five-point start between the two of them. We kind of... We were talking about this during the break, right? We kind of want to see an invade coming from the Braum team. Uh especially at level one, could be very useful and could catch your opponent off guard. But instead, both teams, they're just trying to feel each other out. It is a best of five. You don't want to expend all your strategies, all your resources into the first one and get tilted for the rest, right? You want to be able to mm -hmm. probably ease into it. At least maybe that's the logic of both of these teams as they're just basically drawing the battle lines right now across the river. There is some words going down, at least on, on both sides, making sure that invade is not happening. But basically standard for both junglers at the moment. They will be starting on the bot side. And as we said, uh, looking to overload the top side possibly because that could be the breaking point for both of these teams. I don't think there should be much action in bot side because uh, King Civil and Oreo Murderer should be fine, honestly, in this bot lane. And I don't think there's much that Budai and Kor can do to be able to stop them from scaling because unless there's some really weird level one that happens in the early game. Yeah, I wanted to hear from you what you think of the support staying in lane versus roaming because I'm I'm expecting action to be wherever Oreo, Murderer, and Core show up, but I'm not sure whether that would be in the bot lane or if it's going to be in other lanes. It depends on the timing, right? Because you don't want to leave your ADC all alone to fend for himself. You have to make sure that the wave isn't pushed in, that you have the opportunity to be able to go on a proper roam timing. Otherwise, someone could get punished and we have... We, we had a bit of a disconnect, but all right, we're back in it. As uh, as the top laner, uh, Bobby Rob, uh, uh, just just a uh, just a uh, just warming up, you know. I think that this is a spectator bug where it uh, shows you that someone's disconnected uh, before they actually are disconnected. Uh, but now we're into pause, so uh, hopefully we will see the conflict resolved soon. Uh, let me see if I can read the chat. Uh, restart router. So something going on with Bobby Rob. Hopefully we'll get it resolved soon. Yeah. I mean, I guess we can go straight into podcast mode, Tiger. How was your day? <laughs> My day was pretty good. I mean, not too eventful in the normal stuff. Go to church and come home and eat food. And uh, that's fair, that's fair. You know, how was your day? I mean, I, I woke up, I saw that DK defeated my Linus 3-0, kind of disappointed about that. <laughs> kind of hoping, for, I was kind of hoping for a good series from Mad. I guess they made it close in the second and third game, but just unfortunate things pan out that way for EU. Yeah. I, I felt like Mad could definitely have made a deep run if only their opponent wasn't like the tournament favorites from the start. But it happens, you know. I mean, right now, we don't have the tournament favorites at the start here uh, in Runeterra Academy in this quarterfinals, mm -hmm. at least. We have uh two... We have two upcoming challengers here because BBC is waiting in the wings in the semifinals ready to receive whoever wins this round. It be, should be an interesting fight to see who manages to make it up there. The semifinals, I'm expecting it definitely to be a stomp, of course, but there's always the chance for a surprise, always the chance for an underdog upset. Yeah, of course, and there's a reason why they played the games. I mean, we saw it last season with the gauntlet run from Legend Spartans as we get back into the game here. But any team can get hot at any time, and it's just a matter of how far they can go with that uh, oh, moment. Wait. And we'll see some it. action, action in the bot lane though. As Echo is already going towards that location, possibly going to yeah. go for something. Here comes Ryuji. It's a flash auto from Core. We'll see if it's going to be followed up. I got the freeze happening right at two forty-six. Yeah, same. same. Uh, <laughs> and we'll see how it, we're right back into it. The stuns come through from Ryuji. Ikawa, and it's first blood going over to Air Esports Revival. Oreo Murder gonna have to flash it out, and that's a successful gank into the bot lane. And what a beautiful layering of CC there from Air Esports Revival. First, the flash uh, auto attack from Nautilus immediately into the parallel convergence coming in from Ryuji. It's just there's nothing that King Civil could do. They were just pushed up. Unfortunately, had no information that. Well, Echo is going to go for a play like that, and I'm free stand again at 314. 315, 16, 17. Are we good? Uh, I'm not synced up with that. Let's let's get synced up. Uh, Wookie? Wookie? Can you give us a time? All right. 
I'm at I'm at 3:45, and hopefully we can get all matched up there. 49, 50. All right, we're all on the same page again. Let's go. Right. Whenever we have disconnects, we have to worry about this. But Delilah looking for a bit of an invade. Ryuji going to be in a bit of trouble here. Smite for health. Stun comes through nonetheless. Delilah flash Ooh. for the kill. Going to be the one for one kill in the jungle. Economical wants to oh, even it. Economical up, gets it. So here comes the stolen parallel convergence. Not going to land for the stun. Demo going to look for core. It's going to be Bobby Rob on the roam down too. It's Delilah in trouble. Eyepatch Mickey here as well. Delilah no flash because used for the kill economical going to trade it back now i patch mickey on the run going to try to be able to get out with just dashes not going to be enough though flash required and the roam from demo means that the fight still could be going cores here too it's a full fiesta going on in the top side river oh, hook the hook. Man from core demo going to try to find the claw shield going to be down flash away and that seems to be enough to dissuade any further engagement you you die maybe going to be dope now it's going to be a trade though it's the tower shots coming oh. from economical but he's got no health you you die gonna try to trade it back down with a little bit more acathian rain but it's not gonna be enough it's no kills in the bot lane but it's kills everywhere else yeah that's what i mean by when the support has to have the timing and orders in order for the adc to not get the view you die he was in a lot of trouble there but it's a good thing the teleport from economical manages to save him just in the nick of time i think the flash was also able to save him but would have been very close otherwise i think they just expended it just to make sure their adc doesn't get killed immediately but that's really something you have to watch out for and all that chaos happening in the top lane was just because of the cheese quote unquote cheese gank that echo did in the bot lane yuji going for that gank meant that delilah wanted to make a cross map play on the other side of the map he went for the invade and was able to get the kill Unfortunately, everything else went air esports survival way, especially with economical getting the kill uh, onto uh, onto Delilah. He's gonna be super happy with that. And I'm not sure if he had the exchange of buffs. I believe he did. Yeah, he wow. does. He has the crest of cinder. cinder so we got uh, buff right and a kill for the mid laner. Right on to Drake, number one. Cloud Drake going to be focused down. It looks like Air Esports Revival are here first, but it looks like a fight may be breaking out here. Core looking for the engage with the hook. Delilah going to try to finish off you. You die. Not going to have quite enough damage. Ryuji going to be able to finish off demo. Now it's going to be traded back. No, not enough damage coming through. Delilah wants a reset, but it's not going to happen. Economical shutting it down. It's two kills going over to Air Esports Revival as well as the Drake oh. King. Still, still maybe on the hunt. No mana left. Though Zapper going to take it all uh, honey fruit is going to give some regeneration but that's all the consolation you'll get oh man very unfortunate and the game keeps freezing on me so i have no idea if we're in sync or not again but anyway yeah that was a great team that's a great fight from air esports survival able to find the opportunity to get the drake and able to play together as a team to make sure that they're not bunched up and well there's not and there's no way king said uh, there's no way for king civil to have enough damage yet just yet he still just has a long sword he still just has boots, a long sword, and a dagger. So not going to have too much damage yet as a Jinx, especially in this early game. And they were able to just play that super well. Economical and in a lot of trouble, though, in the enemy jungle for some reason. Greedy invade, and that's uh, no. be immediately taken out. Shut down going over to Delilah here. That means that a little bit of gold going back into the pockets of Omega Gaming Unknown. Maybe a bit of a reprieve. Still down about 1,000, though. Uh, can I get a time check for uh, Wookie? And another hook coming down onto Oreo Murder are going to have to put up the Unbreakable here. I'm going to be able to survive that one for the moment, though. All right. I think I should be synced up this time. Hopefully the game doesn't freeze. Uh, it's really frustrating for, for me to win players disconnect. It's not just the... Can't connect. Here comes the call. Oh, the no. Forge God stuns coming Keep through. Collateral damage not able to buy the space. And Bobby oh. Rob finish off the kill great gank in the top side and air esports revival keeps pushing the pace oh my gosh it's just air esports revival laying the cc layering the cc again and again they're punishing the the they're punishing the lanes they know they don't have summoners yet i patch mickey had to use his to escape the earlier chaos that happened in the top side in the early game and now they're able to to gain more out of the, out of what happened 
after that Ooh, fact, you guys don't have any flash. in the front lane it's king civil looking to find the zapper good hook from core is going to be able to disengage and that means that the entire top side jungle may be in jeopardy here for delilah yep there's the invade right now and the game is freezing again can i have another uh time check Ooh. Okay. Void Seekers coming down to interrupt the recall, and that's going to continue to allow the jungle to be stolen away. Yeah, yeah me as just, well. Uh, we just rolled wrong on the server, unfortunately. Hopefully in the next game, it won't be too bad, but yeah. Right now, everything in the hands of Air Esports Revival at the moment. They're able, even able to avoid the cross-map play that happened, so yeah. It's in their hands right now, at least this early game, and that's what they needed to do in order to get ahead, especially for Kai'Sa, especially for Dayone, especially for Echo. Echo also has is a good scaling, but if he gets ahead in the early game, he can be truly oppressive, truly oppressive and very much unkillable. Yeah, and now with the Rift Herald going over as well to Ryuji Ayakawa, we may be able to see the lead increase anymore. It's 2,000 gold right now in favor of Air Esports Revival. And uh, with the Rift Herald being able to be dropped before plates go down, that means it's at least another 300 gold going over to the side of Air Esports Revival. And then you can just continue pushing pace. Oh. Delilah, once again, trying to find the invade. Going to Blast, going into the Krug pit. Oh, what? Now we got Bobby Rob on the room down. Ryuji going to be dropped very low. Going to have just the last second of the chrono break. And able to get out alive, Bobby Rob taking down the kill. Economical oh. flash, flash on demo. Demo going to try to walk it out. Economical going to try to find a dash here. Can he get the unsealed back up in time? Demo going to try to survive it out. The claw is not going to be enough. Economical finding the solo kill in the mid lane. Wow, everything just going air is for survival away this time. It was another attempt at an invade by Delilah. This time it didn't break out. He wasn't able to kill his opposing jungler just at the last second. <laughs> the chrono ship was able to take place along with the parallel convergence so he was stunned there for ages and couldn't do anything with the amount of damage that bobby rob still has in this early game along with ryuji it's gonna Ooh, be dangerous able to clean teleport up course here flash into the death charge that's oh, a no. full cc chain to death demo out of luck on the teleport oh. in the mid lane Ah, uh, that's a tilter right there that's uh <laughs> that's the mid tower gone like that should be the mid tower gun yeah i was gonna say about you know the side of air esports survival because they're so far ahead they can just they have all the options where they want to put their air out this time the fact that economical is able to get that kill and be able to get another kill means that they can put more resources to him and start feeding him a lot of gold and there we go zone control coming from ryuji to make sure economical stays alive he's so far ahead right now along with ryuji this top side absolutely smurfing it at the moment I don't see them going behind anytime soon. And when the team fight, team fight team is is ahead. It's very hard to be able to challenge, you know, because if you're if you're a team that wants to go for a one three one or a four one split push, you need to have pressure. And unfortunately for Omega Gaming Unknown, they just don't have that at the moment. Yeah, and I mean, if you look at the individual champion gold, I mean, it's a thousand in the jungle, it's fifteen hundred mid lane, it's almost a thousand in the top lane as well. I mean, it's just going so heavily in favor of Air Esports Revival at the moment that it's sometimes hard to see an avenue back in, especially with all of the objectives that have been choked away. Uh, but what do you want to see from Omega Gaming Unknown going into this mid game, Miles? That's a good question. They need to get something back somehow. Be able to make a play or wait for their opponents to be able to make a mistake. Now, this early into the game, I wouldn't say Air Esports Revival have it guaranteed just yet. It's still 12 minutes in, of course. But it's definitely in their hands at the moment. At least at, uh, you know, 60-40, I'd say. So, uh, the, side, the, side, uh, the side of a Mega Gaming Unknown, they need to find their way to claw back into this. Possibly go for some play in the bot lane. Make sure that King Civil can get ahead. And if they're going to be able to do that... Uh, then they have they found a uh, win condition, you know, because the ADC Jinx can definitely be a hyper carry that you can play around. Yeah, and uh, I patch Mickey struggling to even get any damage onto this turret. You're gonna be able to pick up one plate, but that's just about it. And we talked about how Orn is not very punishing in the early game. Well, he has been able to pull up this lead against uh, the Graves pick that we thought was going to have all this priority. Uh, in a range versus melee sort of matchup. 
but well, the damage has meant this much and economical is here once again eye patch mickey may be in danger here gonna find the near sight uh economical gonna have to return to shape and that means that it's going to be the disengage from eye patch mickey but at the cost of flash and there we go flash again gone from eye patch mickey and i was just gonna make the point that Unfortunately, Ipatch Mishki wasn't able to punish the Ornn as much as he would like because he lost his flash early on and he just got punished again and again by Ruji and Bobby Rob here in this top side. So not as much pressure as he can get. And now the fact that he doesn't have his flash again means he's so vulnerable to another gang, especially against uh, an AP user uh, a or a magic damage dealer like Ruji. His passive doesn't stack for, for AP. It's only armor, basically. So he's going to be in a lot of trouble should Ruji decide to visit there again. And he is in the vicinity, so it looks like they may go for something else. Yeah, it could even be a dive, but Delilah trying to show up in the mid lane demo could be in a situation with Economical. Economical trying to back it off, going to be able to find the dash. Delilah not able to connect with the Heartbreaker, but it doesn't matter. Going to be able to pick up the kill. Meanwhile, the top lane gank has come through. It's a one for one on the gank trades for each team. Oh yeah, very good. Uh, Wookie, can I just look at your screen? <laughs> One second, guys, because I'm way too far behind and I don't think I want to fix this anymore. Let's go. But anyway, yeah, one for one cross map play. At least there's a response. Might have but... a dive coming through in the bot side. Could be trouble here. Demo and Delilah tag teaming on the roam after the gank in mid lane. Core going to be able to find the two man knock up with the death charge. Still burning down pretty fast. Though turret shots coming Whoa. in. It's one for one so far. Ryuji died going into the shadow realm. Going to be able to kite it out thanks to the turret. Now Ryuji's here as well. This is turned in favor of Air Esports Revival. The claw going to come down. Ryuji die still having the space. Going to be able to finish off Demo. Oreo Murder could be in trouble as well. Ryuji Ayukawa going to try to finish this kill off. Not not even gonna get hit by the frostbite that's more kills going over four for one in favor of air esports revival that was sheer dominant that was such a good response coming from air esports revival in that in that exact moment when you know we talked about how you know we talked about how omega gaming unknown how, how, how they had to get back into the game it was gonna be through the bot side so immediately air esports revival they recognize that and they're able to respond uh, to the play on the bot side. Ooh, oh, no, iPatch Mickey go. could be in trouble yeah. once again. Ryuji taking the worst end of the beginning of oh, this straight. Right. iPatch Mickey with some good spacing here. And no more follow-up means that it's a pretty good fight coming through there in the top lane. Ooh, it's a yeah. dive coming through. Oh. It's going to blow King Sybil up. Going to get rooted up. One more tower shot. Will be enough to turn it around. Great flame chompers from King Sybil evens it up. Bobby Rob may be in trouble here as well. Going to be able to just walk this one out, though. He's a demigod. He don't care. Yep. Right now, it's going to be... It's still going to be Ares for survival ahead, honestly, even though it was a one-for-one one in the bot lane that you don't really want to give up. I believe that was a shutdown, too, going over to the Jinx. Uh, as I said, you have to think about uh, the kind of ways that your opponent can get back into the game and deny that once you're ahead. Uh, fortunate, uh, fortunately for Air Esports Survival, they were able to mostly counter what Omega Gaming Unknown uh, wanted to do. I guess except at that moment where they give Jinx a shutdown. But it's not too bad in the grand scheme of things. Things are still under the control of Air Esports Survival. Yeah, uh, six and a half thousand gold lead now means that Air Esports Revival, right where they want to be, they're able to take Soul Point Drake here potentially, uh, as long as Delilah is in over the wall looking for a steal. Uh, control ward in the pit should be cleared out pretty easily here. Delilah and nearby could be looking for something. Smites early, but it's going to still be cleaned up by Buuda. Living dangerously there, Ryuji Ayakawa. Count your blessings. I mean, at least the at least the ultimate from Jinx isn't uncapped anymore, so she can she don't doesn't she is not able to steal objectives left and right like she used to be able to do earlier this year. So there's at <laughs> least that solace, but unfortunately, it's not gonna be enough solace for the side of uh. For the side of Omega Gaming Unknown, they're just so far behind Ooh, right could now. Could be trouble. Like going to get hit with the Flame Chomper. Certain death awaits. Delilah going to miss the Heartbreaker. Core goes with the stopwatch just to buy a little bit of time. That won't save you now. As it's a pick coming off in the bot lane for Omega Gaming Unknown. Yeah, Omega Gaming Unknown at least able to respond somewhat. But oh no. In one More fighting coming map, out. Right? Economical trying to finish off. Eyepatch Mickey. Great knock up coming through. Setting it up and economical knocks it down. Again, they just find the opportunity. Graves doesn't have his flash, so they're able to go for a play like that. Unfortunately, not 
enough respect in that regard and now well everything just going in favor of air esports revival despite some kills going over to omega side it's not consequential enough it's not have impact do i were to get some well no ryuji has showed up to steal away the kill potentially oh bobby Rub actually gosh. going to be able to pick it up king civil can do no help towards his jungler and it's going to be the chase down into the top side jungle it's a oh, face it. it connects oh. with king civil you can't unbreakable that and now the tornado comes through economical finishing off another kill and that's three going in favor of air esports revival in the top lane it's just sheer dominance from the top side of air esports revival they're just able to get kill after kill after kill they're able to put the right players at the right spots at all time and view and die he doesn't have to do much this game honestly he just has to survive be able to output damage when the time comes but UG and economical are so far ahead they can just be the main carries at this point Unfortunately for the side of for the side of a mega gaming unknown, they do have some a lot of good late game scaling. They do have the graves, they have the word geyser, they have King Seville on the Jinx, but they're not being given enough time. They're not being given enough resources at the moment. It's just been sheer domin dominance from Air Esports Revival throughout the entire first game so far. Yeah, and the only shining light for the side of Omega Gaming Unknown so far has been Delilah's Viego. Four, five, and one. I think that's where you got to look if you want to see a fight going the way of Omega Gaming Unknown. But they've got to be able to secure a kill first, and that's not an easy task when you're up against an Echo, a Yone, a Kai'Sa. And, and those are the three non-tanks that you have to kill off before you can even talk about, or Nautilus. Or Nautilus is too big of a front line when you're this far behind to be able to finish off. Economical now looking for a kill on the Delilah potentially going to have to back off Ooh. because the tower's here. King Civil may, be, may be able to catch him out. Gale Force goes down, but Economical oh, wants to for it. Big shield coming oh, from the what? Shield able to pick up the kill is shut down by Delilah, but this means the start of Baron. Yeah, everyone basically overloaded on the bot side to be able to get the kill onto Economical, but this just means it's going to be a free bear in the jungler is nowhere nearby to be able to take advantage or try to go for a plate for a steal. It's just going to be a free Baron going down. No, it's not free Baron. They did give away Economical's life in exchange for it, but that's definitely still a trade deal that Air Esports Revival is happy to take. One minute, three seconds till the Ocean Soul. And speaking of Ocean Soul, it is two Ocean teams uh, playing today from House Ocean, so... Guys, in this series, no matter what, House Ocean wins. So at least you have that. Yeah, but I think that the fans of either team are going to be looking for their team to win. Don't know how many people we've got partial in the chat and how many are just players on other teams in the junior division. Always good to have the people hanging out, though. Make sure to say hi and uh, tell us about why Air Esports Revival is going to take this Series 3-0 or, or whatever is going to happen here. But right now, they're looking right strong now. wear in purple. Oreo Murder are going to try to catch Core Delilah's here as well, but you can't fight that 2v2. Nope, definitely can't. I mean, can you fight anything right now except for a numbers adventure on your side? Okay. Uh, a break going to be able to get Ryuji Ayakawa away. Core may be able to find Delilah here, and this is the engage they want. Fate sealed on to everybody. Oh my gosh. Great Unbreakable comes out from Oreo Murderer, but he will have to trade his life. Ryuji Ayakawa picking up a second and running to their base. Avoid oh! Seeker Snipe comes out from Yu Yu Die. That's three for zero. Ryuji going to continue the fighting. I Patch Mickey is smited, is finished off. King Civil going to be the last man standing and not standing for long because it's a five for zero ace in favor of Air Esports Rival. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to finish this up in time before before everyone else manages to come up. They're at least going to be able to get the Mountain Zone. They should be able to break open the base. But the dead timers aren't long enough yet. It's just 22 minutes and already, Air Esports Survival, they're 24-7. They're 14,000 gold ahead of their opponents. Yeah, all this day is, uh, games 24-7, but uh, with only the mid in him down so far. Tier 2 is still up in the side lane. I don't know how quickly they'll be able to end. If the Elder Drake does happen to come up, this could become very interesting very quickly. The mites have not been perfect so far from Ryuji, so we could see a steal coming through potentially if the smites stay a little bit early as they have been. 
The only problem is even if the side of Omega Gaming Unknown manages to steal the Elder away, like let's say the best scenario happens for them, they don't have the burst to be able to take down the to take down their opponents quickly enough for the Elder Dragon to matter. I think in the event that a five v five happens after a stolen Elder, it will still be Airy Sports Survival that wins out just because of how far ahead they are. Look at this, Magi stacks twenty four already on the Echo. He will delete anyone that touches him. Yeah, and Ryuji playing out the game quite well. 10, 1, and 6. We were hoping to see the economical echo, but the Ryuji echo is coming in hot as well. You can't sleep on that, and that's why they have that flex pick coming in. Yeah, something definitely have to watch out for. And playoff teams have to watch out for further into the rest of the tournament. Meanwhile, it looks like we have another pause as... Uh, I'm not sure what's happened this time, but... Uh, according to, to the teams, it is Delilah that needs the pause. So we'll, we'll wait and see if Omega Gaming Unknown is going to be able to come back shortly. Uh, as as well as we got support in bathroom from from Bobby Rob. I'm not sure if if that's accurate. If Core is uh left to use the facilities, but whatever. They probably they did. Do. They're, they're, they're in the chat. They're, they're in the voice chat. They probably know what each other's doing. So just a small break uh, while we take Gravitas of the situation right now. And it's not looking good for Omega Gaming Unknown. And that's a very big understatement. So I think at this point, they're probably thinking about what adjustments they can do. What can they do in the next game to be able to uh, count to stop the sto the big snowball that just happened in this game? It's not even. I don't think I can even call this a snowball anymore, Tiger. This is an avalanche. This is the mountain coming down upon Omega Gaming Unknown, and there was nothing they could do to stop it at the moment, at least. Maybe a few more fights in the early game that could have netted them some more wins if that had gone their way. Just unfortunate. They, it felt like they just got outmaneuvered around the map time and time again, and Omega and Ares for Survival, they were able to capitalize on every si single hole uh, in, uh, in their opponent's defense. Yeah, and I think that going into the next game, I'd like to see uh, something that has a little bit more secure engage coming out for Omega Gaming Unknown. I mean, we, we talked about how effective the Braum is here, and I still think that Braum was a great pick in this situation. I mean, counters or an ultimate able to zone away a Kaisa trying to dive the back line. There's a lot of good utility coming out from Braum, but Braum is not a great engage champ. And if you look at the rest of the comp, I mean, Mordekaiser is good for soloing someone out. Not really great for starting a whole team fight, though. Uh, and then you got Diego, good at killing things. You got Graves, good at killing things. And Jinx, good at killing things. None of them are good at setting anything up to be killed. And, and when you're up against things like, especially assassins like Echo, Yone, you're going to struggle to find any good fights, especially when you're behind, if you don't have that sort of engage. I mean, I guess that makes sense, but I don't think their comp was built to have engage in mind. Because engage is good, but it's good in the right context. I feel like the side of OG, they just weren't able to get off the ground, you know. And if things were even, I'd fancy their chances a lot better if this if 30 minutes into the game, honestly. Unfortunately, everything collapsed and we weren't able to see their comp their comp come online in any matter. In in any manner. So if they want to change their comp to have more engaged, they'd have to be, you know, they'd have to go for a more for a more, I guess, mid game focused team comp that allows them to fight uh these skirmishes and five v fives a lot more easily. It's just that, you know. It's hard to judge when a team's plan just doesn't come to fruition because of mistakes that happened in the early game. All right, well, we're back into the game, so we'll see if it can be a close out cleanly here by Air Esports Revival after taking such a big lead. And uh, I guess that one more thing, if we're not in a fight immediately, is that I thought it was a bit strange that we saw a red side selection from Air Esports Revival. Now, Core is going to be looking for a way in. I patch Mickey with the good moves able to avoid that and it looks like we'll uh, be into some fighting as soon as the pause breaks and uh, now we're back into it flash from ryuji gonna try to blow up king civil good heal gonna come out chrono break gonna be forced already ryuji gonna be stunned up here by delilah oh, but it's something. quickly oh, turned wow. around the knockups are through delilah is down and now into the shadow realm core i believe is stuck with demo could be trouble here teleport coming back in economical gonna try to finish off the fight view you dive picking up a triple kill on 
one to the Kaisa, and that means that it's going to be cleaned up five for one, and that should do it for game number one as Air Esports Revival charge into the base. Dominant first game from Air Esports Revival in this game one of the series in the quarterfinals, and we'd like to see more of that coming from them in the future. Uh, in the near future, unfortunately for Omega Gaming, they have to make a few adjustments. Maybe not. Uh, I don't think with regards to comp because we don't we didn't see how the comp played out for them as much as uh, I would have liked would have liked been able to because I did favor that comp going into the late game. Fortunately, it just didn't happen. They just got too far. They just got too far behind in the early game. Now, if they're able to fix the mistakes uh, that happened in the early game where they were a bit too eager to go for fights against a lot of skirmishers, then I think it would uh, work out a lot better for them. Then I think it would work out a lot better for them. They did show a few good ideas in the early game. Unfortunately, they just got punished time and time again by Air Esport by Air Esports just having the right read every single time, especially with regards to the top side, I feel. Yeah. I I did want to ask if you thought uh, that any of the lanes had priority for Omega Gaming Unknown because I think it's very common to see teams just not draft any lanes with Prio and then this is exactly what happens. You get all of the objectives taken, you're behind in gold and it just avalanches. I think I think more I think realistically Mordekaiser and Grave should have had Prio against Orden and uh Yone. Uh yeah, yeah against Orden and Yone. Unfortunately, they decide to skirmish. And in that case, they're not favored at all when it comes to the laning phase. If things were a lot less chaotic, a lot more structured, I think Omega Gaming Unknown could have won that game. Unfortunately, they decided to fight uh they decided to fight their opponents in the mud and they lost in that regard. They just don't have the champions that were built for it at in the early game. So it's an L for Omega Gaming Unknown, but they're gonna have to adjust. They could they could they could, they could choose to adjust their comp and fight for a more early game focused uh, play style, but if they're gonna run the same comp again, I would like to see a lot more uh, temperance coming from them, you know, not getting baited into any weird fights in the early game that would allow their opponents to snowball. All right, well, we'll take a short intermission, and on the other side, we'll see if the draft changes up for Omega Gaming Unknown going into game number two.
Welcome back, everyone. It's time for draft of game number two between Omega Gaming Unknown and Air Esports Revival. We are switching sides. Blue side for Air Esports Revival, red side for Omega Gaming Unknown. And Miles, how does that change up the complexion of the draft phase? That's, uh, it's an interesting. It's an it, it's an interesting question, right? Because I don't think there's really any. Problem with the draft, just a problem with the gameplay in the last game. At least for the side of Omega Gaming Unknown. If they're gonna be if they're gonna be drafting the same thing, then they have to change the way they play. If they decide to go for something else, well that's up to them. Uh right now they do they will have the option to be able to counter pick like what Air Esports did. I think Air Esports is a team that would really uh benefit from counter picking and they may end up being I'm not sure if uh I don't think Blue Side is complete weakness for them, but they could end up being exploited with the champion pools they have. But you know, it's still a possibility. It's it's, it's still it's still it's still have yet to see from Omega Gaming Unknown because it's just uh, I don't know they have to probably change the way they think about the game uh, game at this rate. But Air Esports Survival, they're just going for go for the set immediately. Uh, not too surprised there. It's a very good blind pick, of course, especially for a top laner. He can sustain. He can do a lot of things for his team in the mid game. Even if he doesn't scale super well, the showstopper is always going to be useful when it comes to team fights. And here we go, OG. OG, you immediately going to answer with one of the possibly the best top laner right now in the current patch, Camille. A lot of the gore drinker, uh, conqueror, uh, top laners got nerfed, which means Camille is back in the meta, baby. And well. It feels like she never left because she's super powerful right now. We're gonna see with Galio, Galio and TF. They are not. Uh, they haven't been taken away. Uh, they haven't been taken away in the ban. So if that comes through, it's gonna be a really strong top side for OGU. Yeah, and also picking up the graves. So we'll see if that's going to be lane graves or if it's gonna be jungle graves. But Air Sports Revival right back onto the Kaisen Nautilus train. This is looking to be a pretty similar comp for Air Esports Revival as last game. We are seeing the Echo banned out here by Omega Gaming Unknown. So apparently that's the diagnosis of the main root of their problems. And I think that that's a very fair estimate given how well Ryuji played in game number one. I wouldn't say it's the main problem, but it was definitely a big problem. And Morgana getting picked up. Okay, that's interesting. I guess they do want to uh, immediately use it to counter Nautilus down there in the bot lane. I think the Braum was effective enough. They could have picked it right then and there or picked up a uh, longer range ADC to be able to deal with the Nautilus and the Kaisa. Don't think Morgana has a really big priority, but it's the flex, right? She can still be flexed to mid. And she can still potentially be flexed to jungle. Not as strong as she used to be as an MSI, but it's still definitely a distinct possibility that we might see mid lane graves and Morgana jungle. Uh, probably not going to happen so far. I'm just surprised that Air, they're going for a very kind of outdated composition, that they're going for a kind of outdated style. But if that's the way they like to play, then definitely go ahead. Of course, it's still just not... Uh, I'm just, just like wondering how they would fare against people who are... Uh, using more of the meta champion, especially down there in the bot lane, because I feel like the Kaisa and the Nautilus just wasn't punished enough. Uh, maybe. I think that it looked pretty good in the first game, and especially the Nautilus half of it. We saw a lot of how that can be punishing uh, whenever you step out of place uh, as the enemy team. If there's no vision on where Nautilus is, then he will find you and then you will be cc'd for four seconds and then die because the rest of the team has the follow-up and uh, as you said i think that the kaisa could have been replaced by just about any ad carry but the, it didn't look bad in the hands of you you die in I mean, yeah uh, if you die is good if you die is just good it's good at it then you know might as well pick it it's still a good combination kaisa notless has been a classic for this year and it's, it's just been the classic bot lane, at least for most of this year. So, in fact, they're used to it right now. It's going to be Caitlyn Morgana in the bot lane. Now, this is a super punishing lane for Kai'Sa and Nautilus to go against. I don't think they're going to be getting any priority whatsoever unless it's OGU's bot lane that makes ends up making a mistake. Yeah, and, and that really begs the question, what do you put in the jungle to go along with that? Because you could really see a lot of ganks coming through. If it is a heavy push in the bot lane from Kate Mord, which I think is pretty commonly expected you can look for a flash hook with nautilus and try to turn it around if you can get good ganked 
So vision is going to be important on the bot side this time around for Omega Gaming Unknown, especially with the bug in the jungle for Ryuji. It seemed like we got a quick disconnect from Miles, so hopefully... he's back. Welcome back, Miles. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that, but yeah. Look at the rest of the draft. All right, we got Kazix being picked up. All right, that's interesting. I mean, he can set uh, set can set up for uh, Kazix super easily, so we should see a lot more action in the top lane again. Yet again, as well, it's gonna be Ryuji visiting there again. I hope. Uh... <laughs> Uh, I hope the side. I hope the side of Ipax making he's ready for uh, he's ready for a camping trip because guys he's gonna bring a tent to that top lane. I'm willing to bet right now. <laughs> oh, we got a Lux pickup coming through Wait, into yeah, yeah. The mid lane. Oh, this your specialty, like, Tiger. Oh. Yeah, this your specialty. Uh, I I might not be a great mid lane player, but I am a Lux one trick. So I do love to see the champion appearing in the games. I think that this will be going to demo, so that should be mid lane Lux and support Morgana if that has been the trend. Uh, Demo's the only one playing Lux uh, this year. Uh, or yeah, Marvel he's the only one, one, right? So he's pretty I much think, the only one who picks it, yeah. I think that we'll be seeing the Lux mid into the Zoe matchup. I think that uh, it's pretty skill dependent. I mean, you gotta be mm. sidestepping everything. Uh, but uh, against the Kha'Zix jungle, that gives me a level of concern because I think that any time that you get hit by anything as Lux, you'll probably die. Uh, especially if it's going to be against the Zoe Kha'Zix because once Kha'Zix hits 6, you, you might not even have to get hit by anything. You just get jumped on out of stealth and then instantly health bar gone. So I'll be looking to see how fast of a Zonia's we get for demo, maybe even first item. First item would be interesting, right? Even if he decides to go for Azonius immediately, it won't help too much with regards to damage against the Zoe, for example, because you're gonna be building Seekers with the armor. So you're gonna you're kinda stuck between a rock and a hard place if you're picking Lux into this matchup right now. And if uh Ryuji decides to pay a lot of visits to the mid lane, it could be very problematic for demo. But he is a very competent Lux player. He knows how to keep his distance and he should be able to help his team out with regards to, you know. Is the use of the final spark to get some uh, presence across the map, able to roam and uh, maybe even gang either the top lane or the bot side, which is something that could happen. It's just uh, going to be hard to be able to match the amount of movement that Economical has on the Zoe. I think that's going to be the biggest problem right now for Demo. Possibly in the 1v1 matchup too, if he gets outplayed. So that's something we have to watch out for. But other than that, if things go smoothly again, and this is a big if, if things go smoothly for the side of Mega Gaming Unknown, they should be fine going into the mid game, and especially if they are for, if especially if they are first onto the objective, where they can start throwing out a lot of poke, they can start throwing out a lot of bindings, especially with the Morgana and Lux. Once one person is caught on the side of Air Esports Survival, they're done. There's no way out of it. They're just gonna get trapped. They're gonna get bursted down. Yeah, I, I guess that the other half of the Lux Zoe matchup, if you rule out the jungle uh, proximity difference coming in, if Zoe portals forward, then you can just flash bind uh, and then full combo off of that because you know exactly where you're going to be facing the Zoe returning to. So Economical will have to be careful with that. Uh, make sure to have Ryuji nearby post level six if you're gonna go for anything like that or else you gotta hit it yeah you definitely do and right now on the side of area for survival we have a bit of a pick comp right now with a lot of you know ways to isolate target a lot of ways for them to be able to tear opponents to pieces if they get the right opportunity and on the other side we have also kind of a pick comp kind of a team fight comp it could go either way it could also be a split flush comp so a lot of ways for omega gaming unknown to be able to play this out but they have to either stay even or get ahead. Otherwise, uh, what happened last game will happen this will happen again this game. Yeah, and I think that there's no better way to put it other than it's going to have to be an increase in execution uh, from last game. And we'll see if Omega Gaming is going to be able to pull that off. And we're going to have a short intermission. And then we'll have game number two. We got a lead of 1-0 to zero for Air Esports Revival. We'll see if Omega Gaming Unknown can bite back.
Welcome back to the Rift, everyone. It's time for game number two. We got Air Esports Revival on the blue side, Omega Gaming Unknown on the red side, and no early shenanigans happening this time around. Oh, yeah. I mean, we didn't have early shenanigans also in the last game. Both teams were just basically going for a five point start right now. I think if Air Esports wanted, they could decide to go for something early game. They definitely have the tools to be able to pull something off. However, uh, the bindings coming from the other side might just be too hard. If someone gets isolated, they will just get bursted down immediately. And I think that's going to be the theme for the side of a Mega Gaming Unknown. If they want to be able to take this game right now, they have to be isolating targets. They have to be picking off, picking off their opponents one by one. Otherwise, in a straight up team fight, I'm not, I'm not sure I fancy their chances too much. Yeah, and I think that both sides will be looking for picks, uh, much more importantly than trying to win 5v5. I think that we may see some 5v5 action going on, but I don't think that any time it will make sense to see a fight start with full health bars for all members on both teams. So we'll be looking for poke, we'll be looking for assassinate, we'll be looking for pick, and uh, we'll see who can get the early advantage. Yeah, that's a thing, right? And whoever gets the early advantage can tend to snowball things, because Lux Morgana, definitely a very oppressive lane when ahead. The lane's going super well right now, though, for economical, just to be able to punish whenever uh, Lux misses one of her skills. She's able to get close, auto-attack, and economical's getting ahead, at least in that part of the lane, but we'll see. How things go further as I think the side of Delilah, he's just going to go for a full clear, not going to be doing too much early. As Graves won't do, they just want to be clearing, they just want to make sure that they can get as much resources as possible. As Shade's going in favor of Bobby Rob right now at least. So priority for the side of Air, Esports Revival with regards to the solo lane. And that's something we have to consider, right? Because last time, it was the solo laners that really broke the game wide open. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and especially with Ryuji ganking hard. Uh, we were able to see big leads developing in the top side very early on. So it will be important for both sides to see if they can uh, continue getting pressure. And, and if any answers can come through Ryuji, it may be looking for an invade here. I don't think any camps will be available to steal away. But could be a gank coming. Uh, pinged out in the top side could be a gank being set up in the top lane. I don't know if Bobby Rob's going to be able to set up could have a flash of face breaker, but I don't think the wave's in a great spot for that right now. So Ryuji's gonna have to back off. It's not, but he had time to do it, especially since the uh, scuttle grab is just gonna be spawning now. Not gonna be able to get too much of an advantage besides the fact that you know Graves was able to get a lot of free time, a lot, uh, a lot more, a lot more free time farming, and Kazik will have to clear his own jungle to compensate. So Graves gonna be slightly ahead when it comes to after the first back. Of the junglers or if they want to decide to do something meanwhile on the bot side you can see that morgana and caitlin is using their priority to help their jungler secure the scuttle crab for themselves make sure that the lila can get ahead because you know if a graves is ahead he's just very very hard to kill yeah and i think that the invade from ryuji gave some important information by process of elimination if you don't run into delilah's graves up there gotta be bot side right and now they're going to have a fight over the raptors coming up here I don't know if either side's ready to full commit. Recall has just come through for economical, so I don't know who was able to actually take that camp because the auto camera didn't send me over there, but yeah. maybe this is, this one why, chicken going away. That's why observers are worth their weight in gold. It just doesn't, uh, yeah. the auto cam just doesn't give the feel of a real observer. Yeah. You know, so that's just how, that's just how it goes sometimes. Would have liked to see that action in the jungle. Unfortunately, we were just stuck. Looking at the looking at the laners, but you know, everyone should keep definitely be keeping their eyes on the mini map for the movements of the jungler and how people are responding. Now, one thing to note is also that economical does not have teleport, so he cannot respond to a big fight if it happens suddenly across the map from where he isn't. And he has to be he has to make sure he has to be at the right place at the right time because if he isn't, he can be in a lot of trouble. Meanwhile, he's gang in the top lane. Yeah, Delilah gonna try to come finish off Bobby Rob. Flash still available. Gonna be able to flash away from the smoke grenade, but that is no more summoner flash available. And a nice little pilt over Peacemaker coming out to interrupt the recall there in the bot lane. Ooh. Uh, Demo taking the worst end of that trade there. Economical able to land the combo. I think Economical is just doing super well in rain right now, getting the push up, but the invade continues. Delilah, he just keeps going forward and forward and forward. 
But, well, uh, there's nothing really much that Kha'Zix can do at the moment. Let Graves have his way with jungle. But meanwhile, there's possibly something they can do in the bot lane if they're able yeah. to get that dragon for themselves. Maybe a gank as well with Oreo Murderer and King Civil pushed up. But they recognize that they're a bit overextended and they decide to back off. Really wise move from them to be aware of the timing of where Kha'Zix can be. Yeah, uh, and Delilah was able to steal away, I believe, the Gromp. So that will be a little bit of a CS advantage going over. But uh, the Drake is started up here by Ryuji. Not going to be a too heavy contest from either side. In fact, the push going in favor of Airy Sports Revival in both of the bottom half lanes. So it should be a pretty comfortable finishing that off. Even a little help from Core coming through. So first Drake of the game going over. But the gold lead this time around pretty close to even so far. Yep, in the early game, just, uh, nothing nothing too crazy just went on yet. I patch Mickey though, he's gonna go for something. Yeah, gonna try to find the roam economical, put in the Hextech ultimatum. Gonna be able to get out alive for the moment, but Flash Follow going to find the auto attack. I patch oh. Mickey going to be over here, but now Ryuji gonna have to flash. Gonna be able to finish off the kill. Delilah over the wall though, Ryuji nowhere to go, and that means that the kills go in favor of, of Omega Gaming Unknown 2 to 1. Yeah, there we go. Finally having a lead for themselves this time in the early game. This time, they were the ones that responded super well. It was a very good moment for Ipatch Mickey to go for a gang, unfortunately. Well, he wasn't a he wasn't able to get too much out of it besides the kill. And he's getting further and further behind against his opponent. So Bobby Rob still doing his job in the top lane. Maybe he could have TP'd down bot to be able to help his team out more. But, you know, it's still punishing for the Camille to not have as many resources as she can. As she could have early in this game, but she does have her sheen, which means she's going to be hurting a lot more. So we'll see how Bobby Rob responds to that one. Yeah, and I think that when you got the set, you're looking at a little bit of a different objective than playing something like the Camille. So Bobby Rob going to be able to pick up the Iron Spike Whip. Could be turned into Stride Breaker or Gore Drinker. I'm not sure what the meta is right now because it's the Gore Drinker. Gore Drinker nerfs I believe game. it's Gore Drinker probably. It's probably going to be Gore Drinker. Drinker. Uh, it could be Stridebreaker if he's going to be a more supportive build, but I think Gore Drinker is probably the play for him, right? Even though it did get nerfed, it's still definitely useful for allow him to continue to get ahead, fighting in the jungle. Yeah. Here comes the invade. Oh, Ryuji the the find the outplay. Collateral damage not going to buy you enough space. Now Ryuji could be in trouble. I patch Mickey going over the wall with the hook chat wall dive, but oh. not going to have enough range. Oh. Here comes the final spark. Oh. Not going to be able to land. Core has roamed up with Pew You Die. The entire side of Air Esports Revival looking for the top side. As uh, check that economical still bot lane, but whatever the case, two for zero in the jungle. Wow, what a great setup from Ares for Survival to get something back. That was a really st strong performance from Ryuji to be able to get out of there and bait Eyepatch Mickey in for more as well. Oh, oh, oh. Caliber net, turning it into a kill with the Piltover Peacemaker. Economical, you have stepped too far. Man, I was about to compliment uh, Ares for Survival for making sure the lane assignments mean that no minions go to waste, but well. Uh, Economical just got solo killed by the ADC. That's not really supposed to happen if you're the mid laner. Usually it's the opposite that's happening. But well, it was well punished by King Civil and he's able to get ahead, get more plates for himself. And that's what definitely what you want to see as a Caitlyn because you want to get as much gold as you can in the early game to avoid the mid game drop off that Caitlyn usually has as you can as get to the late game as fast as possible. Meanwhile, first tower going over to the side of Air Esports Survival. They're going to be happy. This time clawing the gold lead back into their hands. When did Bobby Rob get a 30 CS advantage? Has there been more topside priority than I thought? I mean, I know yeah. I have, Mickey has been on the roam a little bit with the Camille. We could have some more trouble coming out in the bot lane. Root going to come oh. down. Oreo Murderer not level 6 though yet. View you die going to go in with the Killer Instinct. Going to try to finish off the kill. And will be able to do so. Oreo Murderer will fall. And it's 1 for 0 in the bot lane in favor of Air Esports Revival. That was just well played from court to be able to get the get the sun off. What never wait, never mind. Delilah's coming in. Yeah, we're gonna be uh, teleport. teleport coming in as well. Delilah going to be turned on. Maneuvered. King Civil running away. Core going to be able to stay alive for the moment. Oh, the stop. 
nuts, the stopwatch. It's the stasis, whatever form it takes, and that's going to cancel the ultimate. Core will stay alive for the moment. Taking a headshot there, you live in dangerously, you live oh in dangerous, a sliver of HP. That will be enough to escape alive. And two kills, actually, at, on the long fight going down in the bot lane. Economical looking for more. I think that was a stolen flash with the W. Uh, but whatever the case, looking for more. Not going to be able to just find it just yet. But uh, still a good fight for Air Esports Revival. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. That flash was a bit sus coming from Biudai. I think he panicked a bit. Not realizing that the support had to stop watch the communication, not completely being there in time. But you know what? They'll still take that out play, honestly. They're able to get out, course, able to make the play. And it was just unfortunate that. Wait, did Kazix get that? Did Kazix uh, get that? Wait. Yeah, I think so. Let, let's check. Are we going to do a. Uh... Oh, no, he didn't. He did no, not. No, okay. no, that would have been, uh, yeah, been, been a tilter right there. That would have been That would have been the tilter right there if Kazix had gotten that move off. Yeah. Oh, uh, Ryuji. Good. Second drink in the oh. game coming up, going to be the cloud. Uh, of course, the bubble able to be immune by the spell shield, but that means no spell shield for the rest of this Drake. And that means that once again, 2 0 in favor of Air Esports Revival on the Drake count front. I'm surprised just how much Bobby Rob was able to get on, to get on his own in the top lane, especially against Camille. The fact that he will be able to get so far ahead and make that play on the bot side for his team. Usually we'd expect a, diff we'd expect a different story, right? Remember that first fight in the mid lane where Camille decided to go for a gank? Usually it's usually it's Seth who would do that. Seth would be far behind with Camille being ahead trying to push the tower. But instead, the opposite happened. It was Camille that decided to go for a gank. It was successful, but well, it's Air Esports rev Revival answering back time and time again. And they've been looking so good when it comes to these small skirmishes that happen. Especially the bot lane. Uh, Buu, Dai, and Kor on, uh, on, on, on Kai'Sa and Nautilus. Defying my expectations, honestly, for the pick. They're just able to win out again and again when it comes to when it comes to this all these all ins. Yeah, and looks like Ryuji has showed up in the bot lane. They did a good job of getting all the vision down. Uh, but Buyuji chunked out here. A uh, good interrupt by Core. Now going for the death charge oh. under tower. Going to be able to finish off the kill under King Civil. Oreo Murder going to try to turn it around with the chains, but it's going to be two for one. Ryuji still going to be I'm under tower. Two for two. Maybe going to look to clean it up. Taking a tower shot. Ryuji could be in trouble here. Delilah going to try to finish off the kill and will be able to do so. One auto attacks all it takes. The shutdown goes over to Delilah. It's two for two in the bot lane. Yeah, unfortunately, he didn't know the light was coming. Otherwise, I think he would have just suicided to the tower. Because giving the Morgana, the gold would have been a lot better than Graves having it. So, the light is still managing to answer back. At least it's a two for two. So, not going completely completely horribly for the side of uh, Omega Gaming Unknown. They're still definitely able to fight back in that regard. And they still have the chances to get in this game. The gold lead has uh, shrank a bit. It's not getting too far ahead right now. As in the top lane, it was Eyepatch Mickey that's able to get... Use the time that he was given to be able to get more gold into his pocket. So, at least time well spent for Omega Gaming Unknown. They're not out of it yet. The comeback is still possible. And, you know, wouldn't uh, hold too much problems. Just yet. Final Spark? Oh my god. This is what happens when you're able to land a root as Lux. But uh, that means that with no more ult available, Economical may be able to stay in lane just a bit longer. Actually, a back to almost half health still has that corrupting potion. And be able to chug that a little I bit. Just, I just realized we have an Infernal Drake coming up. And that on a Kaisa and a Zoe would just be so hard to deal with, honestly. Yeah, so, Infernal Soul I, is going to be feeling very nice for the poke champs in this game. Uh, also on the other side, I mean, you look at champs like Lux, Caitlyn... You know, oh, see that. Oh, you, you die healing killer in. In. Time. teleport coming in or murderer going to look for the soul shackles this may be a bridge too far view you die picking up the first kill of the fight but i patch mickey able to clean it up on the end one for one in the bot lane and that means that the turret could be under fire as well well they're not they're just gonna go for a reset <laughs> i think king's devil wants to get more items under his belt uh that was a very ambitious play coming from view die 
I think it's because he had the item advantage, so, so he thought he could be able to easily go for the 2v1. Unfortunately, it was not a 2v1. It was actually a 3v1 because I Patch Mickey just responded immediately. And oh, wait, is a lot of trouble here. Hextech ultimatum goes down. I Patch Mickey gonna have to run away though. Bobby Rob actually not going to be able to continue this fight. Teleport coming in looks pretty good for Omega Gaming Unknown. Bobby Rob gonna no. flash forward, gonna find the showstopper, gonna try to live with the Gore Drinker, but it's not quite enough. And then it's kill going over to Delilah, one for zero in the top lane. Okay, Air Esports Survival, they need to chill out a bit. They're going for a place where they're easily getting outnumbered. They have to recognize that even if they do own that part of the map, technically speaking, they do have map control. It's a lot faster for the enemy team to be able to get there to support their teammates because of the, because, because of the, you know, it's just the way geometry works, unfortunately, for them. So they have to be careful when going for a place like that onto what they think is vulnerable targets. Actually, it's not vulnerable, and they have to make sure, oh no, Oreo Murderer! Oreo Murderer trying to Ooh. face check the rush. Face checking the wrong rush, but Ryuji oh, gonna need an instant no. deleted 100 to 0 demo able to finish off the kill, and that is the power of the Lux. What is happening to Air Esports Revival? They're just throwing the game right now. Uh, <laughs> they're they're going for all these uh, uh they're going for all these isolated plays, and unfortunately, as I said before, they just get outnumbered. And when they get outnumbered, they end up dying and giving away all of the shutdown gold to their opponents. And right now, well, the dragon is almost up. The jungler is dead, and guess who has control over the river? It's gonna be Omega Gaming. But wait. Camille, you oh, dies in flash for flash and one oh, more off with that core finishing one. it off with the ignite taking landing. Delilah looking for damage on the view you die, but it's not going to be quite enough just yet. Core trying to escape, gonna find oh. the show, gonna find the turnaround. Final spark trades it back, but two for one in favor of Air Esports Revival. Fight may not be over just yet, and the wave could be contested here. Drake still available, Bobby Rob in the area. To try to look for something, I patch Mickey may be retreating here, and I think that with the river prio secured, uh, it should be the third Drake of the game going over to Air Esports Revival. Oh my gosh, Cora just saved Air Esports Revival there. If they weren't able to get the control, then they could have allowed for uh, the side of Omega Gaming Unknown to stall out for much longer, especially since their jungler died just before the dragon. Core was able to buy enough time by immediately going for a pick on to uh, onto King Civil on this Caitlyn, who I called Camille in the last team fight out of panic, but it was actually a Caitlyn. My bad, guys. But anyway, yeah, it was just Core being able to uh, be the hero for his team in that regard, start a fight, and uh, you know, basically cover for cover for the mistakes his team was able to do. And now Air Esports Survival firmly back in the lead because of that. Yeah, both Piltover and Champs, I think that they will be able to... Even both are girls that have names that start with C. Basically the same They're basically thing. the same but, thing. Yeah, yeah, they're basically the same champ. They're absolutely right. <laughs> Hopefully the houses in Piltover aren't too against each other. But uh, whatever the case, we'll get back into the game and we'll, we'll see if the Infernal Soul is going to be the point. Oh, no. Where Fighting occurs. The root comes down. It's going to oh, be the kill gosh. force into auto attack. King Civil picking up another kill onto Economical. 0 3 and 2 for Economical, not having the best start to the game. Pick could be coming through once again. Oreo Murderer able to find the Dark Finding. The Disengage trying to come through. Core able to put out the Death Charge onto King Civil. B U Die has yep. showed up to the fight. Oh, another Dark good. Finding comes through, but here comes the Killer Instinct. B U U Die trying to blow up Delilah, not having enough damage yet. Final oh, Spark lands on the U Die. And changes the complexion of the fight. Delilah able to finish off the kill on the core. Bobby Rob still walking forward, looking for some low health bars. Not going to be able to find any kills. And it's one for zero in favor of Omega Gaming Unknown. Man, just when Core was uh, allowed to w w was able to save the game for Air Esports Revival, uh, it's going to be the side of Omega Gaming Unknown bringing it back after some mis key mistakes. It all started with that pick on the Zoe in the mid lane where she went too far forward and got hit by the binding. I have to make sure that they have control, otherwise they just get hit. And as I said before, once they once they get hit by one singular binding, they're stuck there. They can read the book, they can read the novel, they can watch the series, and <laughs> they're just gonna end up back in the fountain. Yeah, and uh 
Well, we're seeing both teams executing on these pick comps. The kill score just keeps staying this close. The gold is dead even. It's 10 to 11 on kills. But right now, the soul is all that matters. We've got two and a half minutes and then Infernal Soul coming up. And if the Infernal Soul does go down in favor of Air Esports Revival, I think that that makes it so much harder for Omega Gaming are known to stay on even terms here. The the Infernal Soul, especially with Poke Champs, you got Zoe, you got Kha'Zix, you got Kai'Sa. It's going to be very difficult to stay alive through all of that poke. The problem is that, well, Omega Gaming Unknown's poke is better and it's longer range is the big problem. Uh, unfortunately, Kai'Sa, Kha'Zix, Zoe, they call, all kind of have to go in. And if they have to go into a poke comp, it's going to be very it's going to be very hard unless they can really lock someone down. And that's up to Bobby Bobby Rob to be able to get the flank off, to be able to win a team fight like that. But the later the game goes, the harder it is to be able to get the lockdown on the on these carries because they're so far away, they can just hit you with the binding uh later into the game without even being in the same screen as them and suddenly and suddenly you're down 1v you're down 4v5 in the, in the next fight over an objective and that will keep getting worse and worse as time goes on so they definitely have to start taking advantage of the fact that they're so close to the dragon right now if they mess up this next dragon i could definitely see this game going the way of a mega gaming unknown yeah look at the vision setup we're a minute out and this is the time that you gotta fight for control of the river and that's exactly what we're seeing coming out from omega gaming unknown they're able to clear out all the vision i don't think there is any blue wards right now in the bot side river but they've vacated the area are they looking to go for maybe a sneak baron i don't they know if they've got the damage for that but right now they look to be headed back they are still without eye patch mickey but teleport available now we got a ward in the mid lane river brush uh the vision line is being pushed forward for the side of air esports revival still once again cleared out bobby rob gonna try to find a way into the river gonna step forward no, looking for the flash go stopper into the back line it's a two-man face breaker you you die layering on top of it that's one kill make it two and the fight has begun air esports revival gonna try to take it down oreo murder will be the next to fall it's three for zero air esports revival still looking for more demo could be in trouble you're gonna hit a paddle star one more auto would be in up turret shots coming down demo looking for a final spark but it is not the final of the fight because it's air esports revival cleaning up and going towards that infernal soul and that positioning coming from king civil it was just so greedy trying to go for bobby rob when you know he possibly has flash you know that he can immediately get on top of you and when he does guys is gonna come in you cannot let you cannot let your opponents be able to get the drop on you it, it was already in their hands. They had river control. They could see where everyone from the side of Air Esports Revival was coming from. And still, they went for a very, a very greedy play, at least on the side of the bot lane of Omega Gaming Unknown. And because of that, everything just fell apart for them in the snap of a finger. Yeah, and Miles now with the Infernal Soul available, the siege potential is so much. You can take all of the standing gold on the map. I mean, it's only the tier ones that have fallen. Uh, for the side of Omega Gaming Unknown, which means that Air Esports Revival have the opportunity to take all of these Tier 2s, accelerate that gold advantage. They've got it out to 3,000 now, which is a much better than they were doing before. Ryuji going to try to extend it even more. Now it's the Soul Shackles coming out, Oreo Murder, forcing out Flash from Ryuji. Now King Civil posturing oh. aggressively. Economical oh. going to be able to get out alive for the moment. Yu Dai going to have to tank up the ace in the hole and then going to be able to live this one out and it looks like oh, a re-engage coming through from core this is an aggressive choice given both carries are low delilah gonna have to flash king civil going to be able to pick up economical though eye patch mickey gonna try and turn the fight but here comes bobby rob a double kill into the back line and view you die still throwing out void seekers it's three for two in favor of an air esports revival man that was such a good fight looking at it for the side of omega gaming unknown okay ruji Ooh, has to be very careful the baited out demo gonna try to stay in the area but uh that's that's all for that fight no more no more man both top laners were zoning out what they can of the of the entire enemy team unfortunately for the side of omega gaming unknown bobby rob is just that much more tanky at the moment unfortunately for 
Camille, she just got popped like a balloon when she tried to go for the back line. If she had been able to delete some someone, maybe the fight would have gone uh, a lot more in the favor of a Mega Gaming Unknown. It looked like that was their best opportunity, honestly. The health bars were low, but they just weren't able to clean up the kills. Yeah, and they were able to pick up the kill on the economical. I looked at the beginning of the fight, economical, low health bar, do you die, low health bar. They were able to pick up economical, but economical is 0, 4, and 6 on the Zoe. That's not the carry you need. Few you die, able to turn it back around, staying alive, kiting out with the health bar low, and then turning it with the Void Seeker, Killer Instinct combination, and then Bobby Rob on the front line, able to do all of the setup work there. And that means that the gold lead expanding still, uh, and, and that's oh, no. going to be trouble, but good thing that there is a spell shield in the area. We may have the posturing lead to a fight here. It's 5v5 showing up in the top side jungle. Economical oh, no. able to find the bubble, and there's no spell shield this time. Delilah going to drop very low, immortal shield bow going to keep her alive for the moment. But I, this could be the Baron call because the low jungler with no shields coming through, and then... This looks like the call will be that from Air Esports Revival. They're looking for the Baron. They're going to be able to drop it pretty quickly here. View you die on three items almost on the Kaisa. Six, two, and eight. I don't know when the last Ooh. reset was. The Oreo murderer getting blown oh up. My gosh. Out. The Baron falls. Economical, Economical going to be three. Economical going to be hit by the light binding, but Demo oh, going okay. to pay with his life. Delilah going to try to space it out, but the base breaker going to bring her back. Bobby Rob going on a rampage. That's two for one. Air Sports Revival have the Baron buff as well. Do they have the wave? Can they pick it up in the mid lane? Ryuji may be a little bit too far forward here. Bobby Rob going to ensure the survival on the way back out. And Economical has been playing very greedy this game. I wouldn't say this is the best game coming from him, but the rest of his teammates are picking up the slap at the moment. And he's still going to be very useful with uh, the Sleepy Trouble Bubble. So not too bad, not, not too bad, all things considered. And still going to be Air Esports Revival so far ahead at this moment. And just, man, man, everything just snowballed after that one mistake in the final, in the in the final in the final dragon fight honestly it felt like with just one missed overstep and everything fell apart like dominoes it's just really sad to see from mega gaming unknown because they look a lot better in this game than in the first game definitely and they were definitely in a position where they could have brought it back despite getting giving the gold advantage over again to air esports revival but it was just it was just uh they just they, they just overstepped a bit and uh, air, and air is for survival. They're just able to capitalize again and again. Oh no! Bobby Rob oh, out. what? Five face breaker gonna land. It's the showstopper as well. Eye patch Mickey dropping dangerously low here. Going to be able to survive. Oh, but we gotta a get that. Will finish off the kill. What? Bobby Rob able to take the kill in the one v five. Will eventually die for it. But four v four on the map and the mid lane is under fire here comes the wave a second cannon minion going to show up and aid in the destruction of this mid tower it will fall king civil gonna get hooked and the spell shield isn't in time but a oh. big final spark able to finish off ryuji and that means that it's 3v3 oreo murderer very low or as well view you die full health though will be able to walk forward delilah could be in trouble here flash going to be able to finish off the kill view you die is unstoppable here comes the void seekers it's going to be a big chunk and on to the nexus towers they go the inhib is down core still posturing forward going back off here a little bit paying a little bit of respect a demo has shown the power of the lux could be doing some pretty big poke damage but here comes the teleport nexus towers continue to be under fire that's one down and three cannon minions continue to fire with the baron buff the roots come through it's a final spark on economical but it could be the final stand here for omega gaming unknown bobby rob posturing forward core going to fall showstopper going to go down but it's not gonna matter because the nexus falls and air esports revival push us to match point wow what a game from Air Esports Survival. They were just able, to, again, to find the right opportunities. And, well, it was given to them. And if you give them an inch, they're going to take a mile. We saw it in that last game, especially in the late game with, well, it was Bobby Rob who really showed up this game, I'd have to say, along with Core, finding the right opportunities to allow the carries, give the carries the space that, to do what they want. Bu Dai was like, he was fearless. And he and it was because Bobby Rob and Core were just allowing him to run rampage across. 
the entire enemy team. So really well played from them. And Omega Gaming Unknown, a bit of a disappointing one because there were a points in that game where things were just in their hands, but unfortunately things didn't pan out the way they would have hoped. They just gave a bit too much in the early game, and when it came down to the wire, they weren't able to clutch it up. So, I don't yeah. know. A 3-0 th is starting to look more and more likely. I'm, I'm so sad because Demo looked so good on the Lux. 5-1-6 and six, did almost the most damage on the team. Was rivaling most damage in the game, even, uh, and showed really all of the strengths that you want to see from a mid lane Lux. But at some point, it just doesn't matter when the rest of your team isn't able to find the right angles. And as you were saying during the game, once the fourth Drake came down, once that fight really happened, was the turning point because it was almost dead even the entire way up to that fight. But afterwards, all uh, the side of Air Esports Revival taking it away. And I think that we're looking towards game number three, we're going to be uh, scraping the bottom of the barrel to see what Omega Gaming Unknown can do to pull this series back. It would be a miracle if they pull this back, but honestly, this way you should just become a Garen Enjoyer instead. 100% win rate in Runeterra Academy, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Garen Enjoyer, you say? <laughs> But anyway, all right. Yeah, that's the game. That's the that's the series so far. It's gonna be Air Esports Survival taking taking a two zero lead, and yeah, I think it's gonna be. It looks like it's gonna be a three zero unless Omega Gaming Unknown manages to pull it back. Very unlikely, but we saw that they could. They they were in a position. All right. Well, you heard it get, here first. Have it the line, but for now, I still have to pick Air Esports. Yeah. As you heard, we got to have no more majors in Demacia, but uh, whether that's the case or not, we'll be headed into a short intermission. And on the other side, we'll have game number three, potentially the final hope for Omega Gaming Unknown as we go into the playoff series.
everyone. We're getting right into draft for game number three. We're keeping the same sides as before. Airy Sports Revival Blue, Omega Gaming Unknown Red, and Miles. You got any p potential prospects for Omega Gaming Unknown looking into game three? Yeah. Uh, just don't lose. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, they have. I uh, don't uh, know. It's it's it, it just felt like Omega Gaming Unknown. They were in a position to be able to start getting control of the game. Then they threw it away by playing with too much fire, and they got burned. So again, it's just gameplay mistakes all around from Omega Gaming Unknown. It's not really a draft difference. I feel that's gonna solve their problems here. It's the execution in game that's being the difference maker. At least, especially for Air Esports Revival, they they've been consistently getting leads by themselves, uh, the laners at least, uh, again and again. And for those laners that don't have priority, they're just able to stay safe again and again. So, and then when it comes to those big team fights, those team big team team skirmishes, it's just Air Esports Revival that just keep clutching it up. So, make gaming unknown. They have to tighten up their gameplay, batten their hatches. It's gonna be a long, ser long series to grind if they even wanna make it, uh, make it competitive. So, this is their last chance. If they're not able to win this game, they are going to be out of the tournament, out of the second semester. For Runeterra Academy, all the cards are on the line here, and they have to clutch up or shut up. Yeah, interesting to me that Ares Sports Revival uh, had the set available, which they first picked last game, but it opted to go for the Graves instead. Yeah, I guess. Uh, well, maybe we saw how effective the Graves could be in the last game also, in the hands of... In the hands of Delilah, so probably the early game went super well for Delilah, honestly, with the way he was able to play out. And unfortunately, just not able to translate it into the mid game. This time, it's going to be Ryuji on the pick. We'll see what he can do with it. And he's been consistently getting leads in again, uh, again and again. Last time, he fell behind in the jungle matchup, but was just able to bounce back because of the skirmishes. This time, if he's able to do what Delilah did to him in the last game, then it's going to be hard for a mega gaming unknown to find a way back. But... Well, okay, looks like we have some old tech here. Misfortune and Galio. This could be the bot lane, which we saw earlier in spring, I believe. Uh, earlier this year, this was one of the meta bot lanes to use. Now, however, Misfortune is strong on her own, can be paired up with the Yumi to be stronger as well. I'm not sure if Omega Gaming Unknown will opt into that. Galio is still a def definitely a decent mid laner that can really really play towards the skirmishes so if omega gaming unknown want to say that hey we can play the skirmish game too better than you guys then this is the time to do it yeah and air esports revival actually taking another adaptation look here with picking the leona instead of the nautilus even though the nautilus that they have been picking up game one and two is still available it looks like they probably like kaisa as much as anything else but uh the I nautilus is interchangeable I mean, yeah, Nautilus is interchangeable with Alistair with Leona. I think Leona, prob probably they like the Leona into Galio matchup better. Or if they feel that it's going to be a misfortune that's going to be, uh, or rather it's a Yumi that's going to be played into them, the all in potential from Leona can uh, be a lot harder to deal with, if you're especially if you're technically playing a 1v2 in the bot lane with Yumi in the early game. So it's going to be a kindred response coming from the side of a main game unknown so two farming junglers on their side might not see too much action in the early game unless more invades happen uh so maybe maybe again gonna start on the opposite sides of the map map both gonna start on the red buffs and we won't see too much action unless a 1v1 happens or a 2v2 happens yeah or it could be lane graves and that would break up the lanes yeah, yeah it could be it could be uh i, I mean we've seen lane games before I did want to mention that I got a report from the other series that's going on right now in the junior division, which is Zenigma Reapers versus Nameless Empire. And right now, Zenigma Reapers taking the early 2-0 lead in that series. So uh, we'll see if any fight back comes from Nameless Empire. They've been kind of a wild card all season for us. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, both series 2 zeros at the moment. And we'll see if they're gonna be able to uh, win out, win out because uh, well, we we want some exciting quarterfinals, you know. But I am looking at the semifinals to see uh, whether which for the exciting matchups a lot of the time, especially with BBC playing along with I believe it will be. Let's uh, let me just check. It's CBR. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Man, what a finals it would be if it's uh, CBR versus BBC. That would be a really great finals. 
Yeah, I mean, that was a great, uh, we, we looked at that in the spectate, uh, so we were able to see that matchup the first time around, and it was a pretty good matchup, I think. I think it was a 2-0 in favor of BBC, but I thought that both games were pretty well played, if I remember correctly. Mm. So that, that could be a good thing to look forward to. I think that we should make sure to properly analyze the rest of the draft. Malphite coming through for Omega Gaming Unknown. Uh, so maybe playing against the Kaisa Graves, they feel like they need to have some armor build up here. Uh, but the Silas set as the, the Silas is so five head. Tiger, the Silas is so five head. Look at all the good ultimates he's able to steal. He's gonna be able to steal the Hero's Entrance. Gonna be able to steal the uh, Unstoppable Force and the Lance Respite. It's just so many good ultimates for Silas to steal. And well, uh, economic on that pick should be a sight to see. And we'll. See on the other side, I mean, it is a Syndra. Should be able to play well into that matchup and at least be dominant in the laning phase. But when it comes to those skirmishes, again, Air Esports will definitely have such a big advantage. Yeah, I especially like the Silas as the immediate response to the Malphite. I mean, when you've got a champion that's so heavily reliant on ultimate like that, then picking the Silas always a good option as the counter. And I think that uh, both comps look pretty solid as front to back comps uh but like we've been saying all along omega gaming unknown is just going to have to step up the execution if this is going to continue in the series so yeah uh, they're able to do that here yep execution wise they definitely have to catch up catch up now the early game shouldn't be punished as heavily i feel like because misfortune galio should be a decent lane at least into kaisa and leon especially with misfortune being very lane dominant style of adc and with kaisa being very short range it should still fall into the advantage of king civil and oreo murderer in that lane however i thought again we have to look at the top side whether they'll be able what whether they'll be able to last so far consistently bobby rob has just been able to get the better of eye patch mickey again and again in this lane matchups and if he does uh and with this set He's been working miracles with it, and we'll see if he'll be able to get ahead again. Because I patch Mickey this time; he's on Malphite duty, so should be a lot easier to be able to pilot. Should be even if he loses lane, so to speak, he's not really out of the game. You know, he can still be useful with the unstoppable force. Yeah, and and I think that this is a sort of comp for uh, Omega Gaming Unknown. Uh, where they may have a little bit of early priority in in one or two lanes, but they're falling back on scaling. So I'm I'm wondering if they're going to actually be able to play out the early game. Uh, but but then uh, if they are, then they actually have a comp that looks like it, it would be pretty difficult to take down. Uh, but then you look at Air Esports Revival's comp, and it just feels the same as the two comps that won them the first two games. So yeah, uh, it it just is what's working right now, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Oh yeah, definitely. It's not uh, it's not on Air Esports Revival to change the way they play, and they've been consistently finding opportunities again and again. I've been liking Omega uh, Omega Gaming Unknown's drafts. Don't get me wrong, but. Again, it's execution. They have to be able to execute on the draft in order to win the game. Fortunately, they haven't been able to do that for the past two games. Hopefully, they'll be able to turn it around this time to make the series a lot more competitive. They, the flashes of brilliance are there. It's there. It's there. It's almost there. You can almost feel the, di the diamonds coming. Uh, the diamonds getting cleaned up and polished. But unfortunately, right now, it's just a bit too rough for them. They have to be able to tighten, their, tighten up their gameplay. They have to make sure they don't go for greedy plays. And, you know, if they're able to do that, if they're able to hold on long enough, then they should have a very good ticket into winning this game and, to get, and getting back into the series. All right. And uh, I think that, well, we have a little bit more time before our intermission break should come up. I think that it's worth mentioning that looking forward to the next series, uh, with Zenigma having the 2-0 advantage, if they're able to convert on that, and the winner will be playing against BBC, so uh, BBC will probably be looking at all the strategies going on here. And maybe if you're uh, Air Esports Revival, you want to take this 3-0 so that you don't reveal too deep into the strategy list that you got prepared. Uh... Air Esports Revival was able to take the win against BBC. That was the only team that beat them during the regular season. So we'll see if they're able to continue with that trend. To be fair, BBC had subs in that game, so I wouldn't like 
Oh, Air Revival are the weakness of BBC. Obviously, it's going to be a great matchup. I still think BBC are heavily favored in that matchup. But still, definitely from Air Esports Revival, as you said, you don't want to show too much. You want to keep your cards close to the chest. All right. Well, with all that said, we'll get into game number three of Air Esports Revival versus Omega Gaming Unknown after this.
Welcome back to the Rift, everyone, for possibly the final time today as Airy Sports Revival is on the blue side and looking to take home the 3-0 win over Omega Gaming Unknown on the red side. Yep, Mega Game Unknown, they're on the ropes. This is their last chance to be able to get something going. Otherwise, they're, this will be the end of their season. Moment here in the quarterfinals of the playoffs of the junior division here in Runeterra Academy. Again, nothing too drastic between both teams right now. I feel like if you're going to go for a cheese play, this would be the time. If you are, if you are, uh, if you're a Mega, or r rather, if you are the side of, uh, if you're on the side of, uh, Air Esports Revival, rather, because you have all these opportunities to be able to bring things back if a cheese goes wrong. But instead, they're just going to be a bit patient, way, maybe going for a late invade. This might be the invade we were looking for, Tiger. Yeah, and uh, we'll see if it, anything comes of it. Uh, but the late invade setup with the Leona, I think that's a pretty good idea. I don't know how good Gavio uh, okay. is. Flash forward, Zenith Blade going to go down. King Civil Force to Flash Taunt coming through from Oreo Murderer. That will be enough to disengage, but Flash gone off of King Civil. Yeah, uh, I disconnected from the spectator. Well, that's all, all right. Well, I'll cover you for the moment. We've got Ryuji able to steal away the blue buff. We'll see just how much of the bot side that he's able to take away. But meanwhile, Delilah is going to come in and steal away some of the top side camps. So we may just have a classic split jungle here. As uh, the bot side may be looking at some trades early as well. Uh, Four and uh, Oreo Murderer both playing some pretty heavy engaged champs. So you definitely could see some 2v2 fighting going down here. Four looking to zone it off the enemy bot lane and see if they can get level two first. Yeah, one sec. Uh, I'll be right back with you. <laughs> All right. Miles is going to figure everything out and uh, he'll let all of us know once he's got himself uh, able to see the game, hopefully. Uh, Ryuji able to steal away the entire uh, bot side jungle. Uh, and it looks like Delilah should be able to steal away the entire top side jungle, so we should just be back on even terms here. A little bit of a tempo advantage going over. Though to Ryuji here on the Graves pick, so we'll see if that is going to last us into the mid game. Uh, Scuttle Crabs coming up or anything like that. Economical taking a pretty uh, rough end of a trade, and Delilah nearby, so we'll see if this is going to be the gank angle coming towards the mid lane. Delilah going to look to go in. All right, Demo going to be able to find the combo nation with the scatter of the week. Economical going to get some support though from Ryuji. Ryuji a little bit low here. Beauty Die actually roaming up. The entire bot lane able to come down the river, so that's going to prevent any further engagement in the mid lane. All right, I'm back. I'm just watching the stream now on Wookie Send, so we're good. I'm not sure yeah, what happened. It, it, no one died. Okay, excellent. No one died. Very good news for both sides, I think. But it looks like so far it's going to be Air Esports Survival with a bit of an advantage when it comes to the lane. And CS is definitely in their favor at the moment, at least with regards to top side and mid. That's where their lead comes from. But I mean, we'll see how things go. It's definitely for the side of uh, for the side of Mega Gaming Unknown. They want to be able to stall things out at least until level six when they can really activate the team and possibly go for a play, maybe in mid lane, maybe in top lane, maybe in bot lane to try and go for that dragon. And if they're going to be able to do it, that's a really big power spike for them. Yep, and uh, I think that uh, with with the prio that we already saw from the junglers in the mid lane, uh, I'm wondering if that's going to persist. Actually, Pew die sticking around in the mid lane uh, means that we may have a very early lane swap. It looks like Economical is here as well. Oreo Murder Wait. looking to go the flash taunt comes down only onto economical though Good flash response from view you die i'm going to be able to kite it out and stay alive for the moment that's uh i'm surprised that uh i'm surprised uh things uh the period i decided to stay there for that long honestly they're in that uh mid lane could have gone already down to the bot lane to be able to do something Good oh no King Civil. King Civil, no flash uh, looks like Ryuji and not going to be looking to follow up on that. So good communication there not to have core go in when you're not going to have any follow up. Yeah, definitely. The Naked Rain able to prevent the gang from happening. That's one of the big pluses that Misfortune is able to bring. But, well, big wave pushing right now. 
in favor of the side of Air Esports Revival. They could threaten to go for a play, but I don't think they're going to go do that as the jungler has decided to go for a reset and play towards the top side of the map. As Bobby Bobby Rob, he continues to gain advantage slowly but surely against Eye Patch Mickey here in this top side. Yeah, I mean, this is the set that we've seen so much from Bobby Rob throughout, especially the last part of the regular season uh, and such success uh, for the side of Air Esports Revival uh, on the pick. And, and this is it. why they prioritize in game number two uh, and looks like with game number three didn't feel like it was necessary. Now, Economical looking for a pretty deep trade Wait. here. Demo has the ultimate force of Will going to go down for the ultimate and the kill goes through, but it's trade back in the top side as the gank comes in on the dive. And I believe that Ryuji was able to pick that kill up. So one for one across the map. Core maybe looking for more here. Teleport coming in. Oreo murderer, no flash. And used it to try to chase down Bu Yu Die. Heal comes out. Not going to hit anyone with the justice oh. punch. And Oreo murderer actually able to escape. Yep, able to get away. Decent, decent attempt by the side of Air Esports Survival to make something happen. Unfortunately, it did not. Oh, eye patch, Mickey. Oh. You messed with the wrong Vestaya. Oh, no. She's here as well. Bobby Rob going to That's his own force. Unstoppable force is available, so eye patch, Mickey, it may just be able to walk it out. So, actually, not as bad as I originally uh, thought it might be for eye patch, Mickey in the top lane. It looks like uh, Delilah may be stuck in the middle, though. And hop over the wall, but economical is here. Economical looking for the chains, and that uh, means flash oh. will be required to get out of the pit. Ryuji may be on the other side of the pit, though, and that means that nothing. It means nothing as it, it will <laughs> moment. Uh, oh, wait, something. To go back in, though, it's going to be the Zenith Blade coming down, but I patch Mickey already picking up the first kill of the fight under Ryuji. Bobby Rob going to try to turn around. Flash is forward with Haymaker, able to finish off the kill under Delilah, but where do you go from here? I patch Mickey picks up a second, make it a third, a triple kill for I patch Mickey's Malphite, and this game may be looking better than game number one or two for Omega Gaming Unknown. Economical going to have to King Slay oh, on the way out. Oh, no. Gonna be able to flash. Able, able to potentially oh. survive sidesteps the oh. Dark Spear and is able to survive the dive in the mid lane. Man, so much fancy footwork from Economical to get out of that situation. But it all everything that came down just happened. Not, not solely because of the solo kill that happened to the mid lane, but it was a big factor. I'm not sure why Economical decided to go for that kill there, but Fortunately, it didn't work out. He tried to go for a gang and bot, and now finds himself really far behind when it comes to the CS, with Syndra getting so far ahead. Meanwhile, for the side of Omega Gaming Unknown, they finally have won a skirmish on the top side. They now they have the advantage. That was a really well-played one from them, with Delilah just baiting them in again and again. And unfortunately, again, Aries Sports Survival, they fall into the habit of fighting without uh without a numbers advantage or with without without enough resources and because of that they end up paying the price and this time it's going to be omega gaming unknown with a decent lead in the early game yeah and uh this is what we haven't seen yet in this series uh the first drake going over to omega gaming unknown the early kills going over as well so the gold lead only about 500 right now i don't think that that's anything world shattering uh, and I think that you're just fine if you're looking at this from the perspective of Air Esports Revival. Uh, but Omega Gaming Unknown have the opportunity now to show what their comp actually is supposed to do. And, and uh, with this uh, front-to-back team fight look going with a Malphite Galio uh, and then having the Syndra Misfortune as the backline, I think that they may have a good chance if they can... Right. Uh, continue to stall out this early to mid game delilah looking for the kill on decor not gonna have quite what? enough damage economical turns it around the force of will is not enough to finish him off but the bullet time may be economical gonna survive on a shred of health you are gonna have to flash away stolen bullet time the health bars are so <laughs> low but they're not gonna be able to be finished off you you die looking to go for it aggressively economical is able, able to finish off the kill himself of you you die will take it down able to find one oh able to Ryuji able to trade one as well. That means it's three for two, I believe, in favor of Air Esports Revival. How does Air Esports Revival just keep getting away with plays like this? They're able to barely get out with very few health bars. Then they decide to go back in. 
economical. This man is absolutely suicidal and ready to go for the play that need that allows his team to be able to win. That's really cool coming from him, but sometimes it leads to int moments. But this time it was able to lead to a team fight win. Oh no. Delilah able to take the 1v1 even with the ability to recognize the lamb's respite wasn't needed. Delilah actually with a almost full health bar after smiting away the scuttle crab. Now the turnaround may be here, but it's 4v3. Oh. This is the fight you want, Air Esports. You're going to have trouble as Korg is going to have to stopwatch and give life. And Delilah able to pick up another kill. Two for zero in the jungle. And this time it's Omega Gaming Unknown taking the fight. Okay, Aries from our survival were barely able to bring it back on that last one, but this time they were they, they throw away they throw away the opportunity to get uh back into the game unfortunately with uh it's just it's just Ryuji greeting a bit for that scuttle crab and that solo kill, unfortunately. Uh with the with Kindred coming back from the coming back from the base means that he had a better buy for himself in that case. Fortunately, uh, Ryuji just couldn't match the amount of okay, damage. Well, Kindred can help, but... Ryuji goes oh, with the killer in no to survive. The big shield comes down and Ryuji able to clean up the kill. Meanwhile, Dragon going to go down as it's taken away by King Civil. That's two for zero on the Drake count. This time, Omega Gaming Unknown looking to stack up a Cloud Soul. I cannot believe dude, I actually lived through that. That's... That's a tilter. <laughs> That's not supposed to happen. If you're if you're Sinja, you're gonna be you're gonna be a bit frustrated with that one, unable to kill off the enemy ADC and just barely falling down. So unfortunate for the mid laner. Fortunate for fortunate for demo there in that mid lane, but I mean he's still Sinja. He's still pretty much uh getting uh, pretty far ahead in this matchup, so should be able to be fine. But Still, Air Esports Survival not out of this completely yet. They've shown their willingness to be able to go for wild skirmishes that don't look like it should work, and they end up and they end up working. I don't think this will. I don't think this is a playstyle that will work further into the tournament once you're fighting against more elite teams. But it's working right now for them, at least so far. Uh, Omega Gaming Unknown. They have the lead right now, but they have to be careful. They have been. They have shown throughout the series that they they're capable of throwing leads rather easily. This time, now that they have their map control, I want to see what they can do to be able to take control of this game. Yeah, if you die, already forced to heal, bullet time will come out, just going to chunk about half the HP away. And King Civil is starting to do pretty good work with this misfortune. But meanwhile, the Rift Herald is going to be charging down the mid lane. And with three men strong, it looks like uh, the posturing is to take a third plate. Demo may be able to walk forward here. Oreo Murderer on the flank. It's the Solar Flare on Eye Patch Mickey as Oreo Murderer going to try to take out Ryuji. But it's not going to be enough damage just yet. Good oh. combo coming no! through. Able to find three man unstoppable four stolen away, and that's going to be just enough to disengage. King Civil's here, no mana, gonna have to burn heal, no flash available, collateral oh, damage, not close. quite enough damage though, and that's going to be the survival and the escape. Oh my gosh, place happening all the time. Oh no, economical Mario Murderer taking out the kill, the ignite taking down, and the turret shot will be enough to trade one back, but it's two for one in the mid lane. And the fights just keep coming. I don't, I know Tiger. It feels like these two teams. Uh, I'm not sure if it's an endurance thing, but they're going for plays that look very int to me. Some of them yeah. end up working out, but for Aries for survival, they're able to even things up and even get a lead for themselves. I'm not sure why they decided to fight for that mid lane turret. They could have just let the turret plates go, and it would have been enough, I think, for a push to be able to get something back. Uh, uh, at least uh, to destroy the turret rather, but it's unfortunate from them. And I patch Mickey and, ba uh, and, and Bobby Rob here still fighting mano y mano in the top lane. But man, I, I swear, economical sometimes goes from the highest of highs to the lowest of lows. You know what I mean, Tiger? He yeah, just he sees plays, he sees plays that are that look that, that look very hard to pull off, and he's able to do it. Then there are times when it makes him look like a complete idiot. But th sometimes that's the kind of player you need in order to get things going, you know? Yeah, well, you got to at least try for something. And economical tries for stuff all the time. And we saw game one just how powerful that could be. The Yone was fantastic. Even able to dive under towers and pick up some kills. 
thanks to the power of Immortal Shield, though. Uh, but then we've seen in game number two and three a, a little bit less success in that situation. I still haven't th thought that Economical has been like totally inting an entire game away just yet, but I think that we've seen some more of the moments of just having an int. Um, I am not hearing Miles right now, so uh, it, it looks like he just disconnected, so uh, hopefully he's going to be right back in. Uh, Miles, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Sorry. All uh, right. Gonna... Welcome back. I'm going to try to look at the stream again. It's still connecting for me, so go ahead and take over for a bit. There. Oh, wait. We're back. All right. Let's go. Uh, anything happen while I was done? Anything cool? Anything uh, for once, they stopped fighting. That's all. Oh my gosh. That is something interesting that happened. They stopped wow, yeah. fighting? I know, right? It's crazy. What an absolute miracle. All right. It's going to be a cloud soul right now. Fortunate to Fortnite Mega Gaming. No, not too impactful for Drake, but they'll still be happy to have it. Especially with all the ultimates that they have that they need. This is the press R to win comp. They need the hero's entrance. They need the bullet time. They need the unleash power, lands respite, and then stop will force to get things going. Fight starting Four. out. Four going into the full enemy team. Going to be in a little bit of trouble here. Ryuji going to be hit by the unstoppable force. Bullet time comes through, able to pick up one. But the trades are coming back. Bobby Rum is in on the teleport. Going to be able to start the fight. Two kills going over for one. Bobby Rum may be in trouble here. No haymaker. Delilah oh. to finish off the kill. Two for two now. Demo going to look for dark spheres over the wall. And uh, no jungler nearby. But Ryuji still alive. Wait, never mind. And Delilah is the jungler. I'm not used to seeing the marksman jungler, but the fight continues as it's going to be a scout finishing off Ryuji. But Demo is the target. Beauty able to pick that one up. It looks like it may be the last thing they pick up, though, because it's an ace going over to the Omega Gaming Unknown as they look for the Drake. Who are going to be back onto the map, but it's not in time to take as the sole point. Goes over to a mega gaming unknown. Now it's just unfortunate timing for Ryuji. I don't think they had vision of the Dragon Pay, so he just decided to go right in, but his team was in no position to be able to follow up, and so he just got focused and bursted down before he could do anything, really. The rest of his team fighting at 2v3, sure, they did what they could, but in the end, it's not going to be enough, and they end up falling. Now, besides the Dragon, it's going to be the mid lane turret falling. It's going to be the Rift Herald also falling to the side of a mega gaming unknown, and they are fully con in control of this game at this point. Yeah, and uh, with this Rift Herald take, we'll see if they can get towers on the back end. Uh, right now, the gold lead's still only 1,000, but with the two tier ones still remaining on the map, there's a lot of standing gold that can be uh, exploded into a, a four to 5,000 gold lead really quickly if they're able to set up potentially a two-charge Rift Herald or if they're able to to get three kills and then rotate it into taking objectives. It's a lot of good opportunities right now for Omega Gaming Unknown. Definitely. And good opportunities is what they've been searching for all series law, and now they finally have it. They now have the possibility of closing out this game if uh, they're able to continue to snowball this lead. A Ooh, bit of a problem right now. Is that it's going to be Flash forced out from Oreo Murder, able to escape for now. Uh, and I think that's the disengage coming through. Only a moment of fighting, but it does mean Summoner Heal and Summoner Flash expended from the bot side of, of Omega Gaming Unknown. And this could be the regang. King Civil going to be in trouble. Solar Flare going to force the Flash from King Civil. Now it's going to be the bullet rain coming down. Uh, maybe bot side going to be trouble as well. Bobby Wait, Rob going the under the tower. Feeling pretty aggressive here. Eye patch Mickey maybe trying to turn it around. Good face breaker going to set up some more fighting. Iron Spike Whip going to turn it around. Actually, Stride Breaker completed this time for Bobby Rob, but going to be in trouble. Haymaker has come back off cooldown. Dive could be set up here. Not having the minions under tower quite yet. Ryuji going to tank up the turret shots. Here comes the Ignite taking down four. Going to look to finish off the kill, and Ryuji will claim the credit as the dive goes through in the bot lane for uh, Air Esports Revival. And that's a lot of that's a lot of resources that were put towards bot lane. Now let's see what the side of Mega, uh, Mega Gaming Unknown can get out of it back, and it's gonna be a solo kill. It looks like oh, the stolen lamp just bit. 
the lamb's rest, but, oh. but it's not going to last that long. It's going to be the kill traded back on the top side, economical, going down. King Civil looking to pick up a kill oh, on no. Bobby Rock, but this could be traded back. Not oh. going to have enough for the haymaker, though, as it's King Civil picking up the 1v1 kill. Ryuji trying to come in. Teleport going to interrupt that sort of idea. Demo may be looking to find a kill. Oh, wait, what? He's going for it? going to be a fight back from Ryuji. Force of Will not quite enough to finish off the kill, and it's going to be the CC chain <laughs> coming Oreo Murderer showed up with the hero's oh. entrance. You die is here with the killer instinct. Teleports are coming back in. Economical has joined the fight. You die will fall, but it will be at the cost of the rest of the three man pack. Three for one in favor of Air Esports Revival. Upside though. The base is going down. Delilah able to break the inhib tower in the top side. Just crazy cross map plays going down. Can Bobby Rob chase down Delilah? Looks like the answer is going to be no, and that may end our fighting for the moment. Man, that was just fight after fight after fight, skirmish after skirmish after skirmish with Air Esports Revival, unfortunately, staying too long after they got their victory. It was a punish, then a punish to the punish, is what we're seeing here, Tiger, with like both teams just overextending like crazy again and again, trying to get onto the right targets. And well, it's give it's buying each team enough time to get uh to get players back on the board and allow them to continue to fight over these uh it's not even objectives they're really fighting for they're just fighting for it feels like for the sake of it only towers are really up on the outer side there's no dragon there's no uh there's no rift herald yet oh wait they're going for more oh, oh three man's three man. Man. Oh. A bullet time over the top ryuji is already falling core going to survive with the eclipse for the moment economical going to hero's entrance of the way out bobby rob looking to find the way on the back line showstopper comes down haymaker looking to finish off the kill will be able to take out oreo murderer but it's traded back once again delilah has showed up to the fight legendary for the kindred bobby rob going over the wall going to be able to survive for the moment demo looking to finish this one off scatter the lands once again haymaker comes over the top gives the shield flash over the oh. wall and bobby rob will survive here comes view you die flash forward looking to finish it off killer instinct under the tower king civil able to survive for the moment but it will not be enough view you die going to finish off the 1v1 as the baron is started up meanwhile for the side of omega gaming unknown and they should be uncontested on that but they may be giving cloud soul for it yeah they may have to honestly guys is already on the way but it's going to be a lot faster for them if they make their way towards that but that, that immediately no teleports on, on on side wait that does have his teleport so he can show up just in case something wild happens it's gonna be graves managing to get the dragon for themselves and they have to get out right now it's still, it's still gonna be a baron for the uh, for the side of mega game unknown i think they're gonna be super happy with that as the siege will continue for them and what is, uh, what, what siege potential they have right now if they can just run it down five man as a unit towards the base of air esports revival yeah, and this mid-tier 2 is certainly going to fall. Will the defense come at the inhib tower, or will they have to give even more? Ryuji finally going to be able to show up. Economical still recalling from the bot lane. Recall canceled. This is 5v4. Will the wave be cleared out? It looks like it's going to not have quite the legs to sustain a siege just yet but the second midway coming in means that economical will now be forced to recall but is it in time still 5v4 i don't think this is the fight right now collateral damage is going to be used just to try to clear the wave out the, the wave clear is coming in and this might be enough to avoid any further tur turret damage and the, it's going to be the disengage coming from air esports revival able to clear out the mid wave yeah, they tried to go for a push onto the bot, uh, onto the mid wave immediately, before the recall could happen from economical. But they just aren't able to get uh get away get away with more than just a single tower. It's not too worth it of a baron just yet. If they had possibly someone splitting on the side, they could have had more pressure. But you know, as with this team comp, you are just stronger as a unit. So I don't mind them deciding to aim a ram it down the mid lane because that's where they're strongest at. If they're able to press their, if they're able to use their ultimates and layer them on top of each other, like we saw in that last uh, skirmish over in the jungle, then they should be able to win out. So uh, it's it's close between these two teams right Ooh, now. The hands the still in my gaming unknown. The flank, there's no unstoppable. Oh, let's go. Here. I catch Bobby Mickey Rob. Up, in. Bobby Rob going to be able to find the showstopper. 
going on to demo. It's going to be the Lamb's respite, but that won't last long enough. Yu Yu Dying going to be singled out by the unstoppable force, but Ryuji's still doing work. It's two kills for Ryuji. It's one for Omega Gaming Unknown. That means it's 3v4 on the map. The Siege going to try to continue. King Civil still with oh, a full heart. Going to try to siege it out. The wave coming in into the mid lane. In hip tower going to fall here. Economical still looking to posture aggressively. King Go Civil in. could be in trouble. Bobby Rob back in with the teleport. Economical being able to pick up the kill. It's two. Eyepatch Mickey going to have to be on the run. And it's going to be Air Esports Revival claiming back control of the mid lane. Bobby Raw with the double flank onto the enemy team. He did it the first time, then he did it the second time, winning out the fight for his team. If Bu Yu Dai hadn't died there, I think they would have pushed it down and got an inhibitor tower along with an inhibitor for themselves. Unfortunately, ADC got taken down by the Malphite who was there just in time. But still, what a play coming from the top laner of Air, 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 Air Esports Survival. Yeah, Bob and Rob showing the power and why they've prioritized this set pick for the last few weeks. And it's looking good. And, and right now, we're right back to an even game state. Still, we've got two inhib towers down for Air Esports Revival, so they have to defend against that. But that means that the gold being even is even more favorable with all of the extra standing gold available in the form of those tier two towers. But right now, the next thing up is the Cloud Soul. Once again, every five minutes, it's going to be in favor of Omega Gaming Unknown, the potential to finish up the Cloud Soul. One minute left until that comes up. So we'll see if the vision going to be choked out successfully here four-man group it looks like eye patch mickey soloing the mid lane should be able to join with the rest of the team here as they push towards the river for looking to get back some vision area for air esports revival they're looking to get some poke ahead of time as well with the void seekers this is an interesting umbral wave choice we've got the two man scatter the week we'll, we can talk later about kaisa builds because we're getting fighting going on towards the river once again still posturing and it looks like uh playing this one out very defensively is omega gaming unknown gonna try to find an avenue through this middle of the river sort of gap that they can go through you're gonna try to clear out this control ward but could be perilous as the bullet rain will come down Delilah going to still be the menacing force to deal with uh, for Omega Gaming on 9, 3, and 4 here on the Kindred. Has the Lamb's Respite available. Everything's available. All ultimates, both sides are available. We'll have to see which one's picked up by Economical as the Cloud Drake has spawned. It looks like Bobby Rock looking to go forward. Solar Flare not going to connect. Eye patch Mickey on the back line. Buu Die has already fallen. Lamb's Respite going to be keeping 3 alive, but the shutdowns oh. do come it's the turn it's three kills three kills to one i patch mickey gonna try to survive for a little bit longer but this is the fight for air esports revival this is where they turn it around this is where they go four for one take the drake and maybe the baron oh my gosh air esports revival despite the disadvantages they're facing in this game they're just able to bring it back with superior team fighting bobby rob setting out setting up his team super well able to suplex <laughs> off onto the back line and because of that i mean there's nothing really that king civil could do in that regard demo was just getting solo out delilah tried to do something but well it was economical with the uh, with the ensemble force i think he managed to steal it in the end after the lem respite was down perfect timing just slam that r button take out the entire team and meanwhile despite the fact you die dying there is still ryuji that you have to worry about from the side uh from the side of mega gaming unknown if if they don't deal with the graves, he can still output as much damage as he can, especially towards the carries who are super vulnerable at the moment. Oh, well, that's not gonna quite steal good smite coming down from Ryuji. I just saw in the chat the question of how many marks that Kindred yeah, I was has. About to bring that one currently up. at seven. Yeah, there I was about to bring that up, but there's just no time since of all the action that's happening right now. And finally, Ares for survival, they take the kill lead. That was, that was just an amazing team fight coming from them. And Bobby Rob, again, despite ha having the TP, I was about to mention the fact that he doesn't have the TP to do any kind of flank whatsoever. It would have to be a straight up front to back 5v5. They were a He was able to get onto the priority targets and stop them from doing anything.
Economical maybe wants a 1v1 iPatch Mickey. Looking pretty about good this one. Fight, though. iPatch Mickey going to try to finish it off. Unstoppable Force interrupts the dash. Now Economical going to have to walk it out, but it's not going to happen. Shutdown goes over. iPatch Mickey in the 1v1. And here comes a scatter of the week. Another oh. shutdown given over to Delilah in the Baron play. And miserably failed for Air Esports Revival is Omega Gaming Unknown. A take down two picks. What are Air Esports Survival doing going for 1v1s when that's not the play for them? Especially this late into the game when, I'm sorry for Economical, he tried to go for 1v1 against a Malphite. It's not going to happen. He just has, doesn't have enough damage, doesn't have enough magic penetration. Now they just give an opportunity for them to lose their base after getting, after playing so well these past few minutes. They end up throwing so much in the end. Yeah, and Demo has gotten a bunch of good Scatter of the Weeks right now. I think that I wanted to highlight that for a while, but now that things have settled down for a moment, we have a little bit of a time that we can reflect on what exactly is going on here. Two inhibitors going down means that there will be that much more pressure on Air Esports Revival to defend their base but it will be a little bit of extra income, so we'll see if they can actually convert on that to make it a net positive. My gosh, uh, it is a lot of extra income at least, but still, the fact that the brace is now broken wide open means that you're giving more and more chances for Mega Gaming Unknown to be able to close things out at the moment. Right now, they're trying to go for a 1-3-1, but very vulnerable for the, it's very vulnerable for them to get collapsed on in the mid lane. They don't have the disengage to be able to stop I patch Mickey from just going in with unstoppable force and taking them down. Right now, it has to be settled down in a 5v5 economical, trying to go for at least gonna get the steal onto the blue buff. He's a, playing a very dangerous game at this point, and even his team is starting to ping him to get away from that yeah. area of the map. Yeah, Bobby Rob even coming through later, but able to survive. I think a, a little bit timid on Omega Gaming Unknown right now. They don't really want to find any bad fights because with the Baron still available on a couple members, I think it's about to time out. Uh, but th they could still be at risk of uh, falling further behind. I mean, two and a half thousand gold right now is certainly not a bad lead to have to deal with. And I don't think the lead matters anymore. The lead it's late game. The lead just doesn't matter anymore between these two teams, honestly. Uh, when At least when it comes to gold. The items are basically almost even, and Korra, I think he might end up getting ambushed, but he just has to equip to be able to get away. I know, those two kills that Economical and Ryuji gave up might end up being the kills that cost them this game. Might end, uh, you know, and that starts the comeback from Omega Gaming Unknown if they're able to close this out. The possible reverse sweep is still in the, in the cards for them if they're able to take this game one. So, <clears throat> Excuse me. Both teams playing super carefully at the moment. The next Cloud Drake is going to be up soon, but the pressure is just not there. They may have to give up Cloud Soul, honestly. If, otherwise, they could be vulnerable to a, TP, to a TP from Demo and Eyepatch Mickey. Now, it is a Syndra and a Malphite, not known to be the best split pushers, but they can still up a lot of damages to the Nexus and could be able to end the game. So they have to be very careful. All right, we got 20 seconds on the Cloud Drake coming up. Uh, the vision has been fought for, uh, and right now that ward over the wall is not going to be able to be taken out at the moment. Delilah going to be able to chunk some damage onto Economical. Uh, and, and the control ward in the pit going to be menacing. It's going to be a scatter of the week onto Ryuji, but oh, here comes yeah. the engage. Core able to find the big solar oh. flip. Multiple bullet time going to come down, but not going to be enough for the kill. Demo able to pick one up onto you die, but oh. that just doesn't matter. It's another turnaround as Aerie Sports Revival. Big scatter of the week able to disengage for the moment, but the health bar is low, but not running out means that it's the third time in a row that the cloud drake is going over to air esports revival teleport coming in bobby rub i don't know how you get out of this one demo going to have to scatter the weak able to get the stun and that should buy enough space bobby rob going to still look to walk forward as the q has the stride oh, break but going to only force the flash but still air esports revival coming out ahead no and Ryuji going to walk oh, into the wrong Ryuji. Picked up the kill Oh my gosh. I mean, I don't think it's a consequential death from Ryuji just charging into the unknown like that, blindly into a bush, knowing that there's possibly a Malphite and a Syndra in the area. I feel like that's not the play, especially right before the Baron is about to come up. Yeah, I mean, oh five, four, no jungler on the map. 
two inhibs down. I think that this I is just want to say th- I just want to say Tiger, it's these stupid decisions that Air Esports Revival are making that's keeping them from actually advancing further in this game. It's because they keep going for these stupid plays again and again, not really thinking through about what the other opponents could do to bring this back. Uh, yeah, they're they're getting uh the wrong signals from game one and game two. They were able to pull off these aggressive plays and not get punished for them, but they finally are getting punished for them. And now the Baron going to be started up. Ryuji's just respawned, so the smite won't be in the pit in time. It's going to just be taken off the map by Omega Gaming Unknown. Third Baron of the game, second given over to Omega Gaming Unknown, and we'll see if this is going to be the last one. This could be the last one. The inhibitor should be back in a bit. But yeah, that's another big lead to give off. They're just giving this to Omega Gaming Unknown on a silver platter at this point. Honestly, with both teams. Omega Gaming Unknown, they're doing their best, definitely. They're trying to win out on the team fights. And that's not happening. But again, it's the it's the things that happen in between the team fights that, you know, Aries for Survival keep giving to their opponents on a silver platter at this point. Yeah, good picks coming out from Omega Gaming Unknown. It, it is a bit of a throw, but you gotta credit the advantage that's being taken from him. Ryuji oh dropping so low, Delilah <laughs> able to get the jump. Will be enough to finish off the kill. The heal is late from Yu Yu Dai. That means one inhib down, two inhibs down, and five before into the base go Omega Gaming Unknown. They've got a wave in the mid. We'll see if they can finish off the game. Bobby Rob, you gotta find something. There's no flank this time. One. Nexus Tower already down. Economical holding the unstoppable force. Will he be able to use it? Here comes the start. It's a oh. shutdown on the demo. Glam's Rest been able to come down in time, but the Solar Flare cancels the bullet time. It's a double kill for Economical. Core will fall, and it's going to be the kills wrapped up for Omega Gaming Unknown. They finally get their ace, and they're going to be able to close out game number three and push us to a game four. Oh my gosh, what a game from a man gaming unknown. Able to stick it out to the end despite everything going against them at the latter part of the game. They were able to take the opportunities that were given to them. I had to find the right word for it. <laughs> Tiger. Yeah. Uh, I had to say it in the most in the most diplomatic way possible, but definitely Air Esports Survival, they're throwing things away again and again and again and it's honestly mind-boggling to me how often they do it and they get away with it so far. Unfortunately, this time, they weren't able to get away with it. That death by Ryuji uh, uh, in the in the top lane jungle, that sealed the deal. It was over from there. Yeah, and uh, good execution on the back end from Omega Gaming Unknown. But uh, we got a game number four coming up for us, so we'll keep it brief. We'll get into a short intermission, and then we'll have draft for game number four of Omega Gaming Unknown versus Air Esports Revival.
Welcome back, everyone. We're here for the draft of game number four. And, Miles, I honestly didn't think that we would be back again. But I'm excited to see how the uh, series is going to continue, given the situation that Omega Gaming Unknown actually were able to win game number three. Man, I'm... <laughs> You should be glad I don't have an angry expression on this VTuber right now because I'm molding after watching that that third game. I'm not gonna lie. It felt like instead of it honestly felt like instead of Omega Gaming Unknown being the better team, it felt like Air Esports Revival just beating themselves at that point with extremely dumb decisions in the late game that cost them again and again with I have to say, I'm sorry to say economical and Ryuji, that's not it, my friends. You cannot be just jumping in one V two or one V or one V whatever. Onto the enemy team once you get an advantage thinking that you can just win out on the fight. That disrespect is not going to fly when it comes to these kinds of situations. So they have to play a bit more conservatively. Now, I understand that they felt like they needed to go for place if, if, if that was the case. But, you know, you're such an in, in such a good advantageous position if you just stay put. You have to be very careful when you're in those situations. Otherwise, let's say if the reverse sweep happens... Air Esports Revival are gonna look at this game and th and realize to themselves this is where we threw it. This is this is where this is where everything went wrong. Yeah, I think to that end, it's probably a benefit to Air Esports Revival that they lost that game as long as they can uh, close out the series three one or three two, because uh, we saw them playing so aggressively and like I was saying before. They just weren't getting punished for anything. So this is an adaptation that they were going to have to make eventually. And and it's just coming now that we have to see if they can calm it down a little bit and play a little bit more conservatively. Take fights that they know that they're going to win instead of fights that they think that they could possibly win one out of a hundred times. It's just mind-boggling, right? They win the hard fights. They're able to do that with a team fight with a comp that doesn't team fight as well as their opponents and then when it comes to those decisions right there after the fight happens it just falls apart so and definitely i was talking about og unknown cleaning things up air esports survival have to clean those decisions up if they even want to stand a chance against bbc in the semifinals if they manage to get there because right now we are in a game for og unknown props to them they're able to take advantage of the mistakes that air esports survival made in the last game now, after they, they were thrown a rope, now they just have to climb their way out of the deficit. They're up one game right now, or rather they have one game in their pocket right now. They just have to think about the next game, then that will tie things up and we're going to a game five. So we'll see if they're going to be able to pull off the same thing as they did last time. Looks like Aries for Survival are falling back to the Nautilus guys that worked so well for them in the past. I don't think Leona was really the problem, but I mean, it's, a, it's still an engaged support that should work out well with whatever skirmish comp that Air East for Survival want to go for. Yeah, and I think that the big thing here is that Air East for Survival, with the side selection, are back on the red side, so they will have the counter pick this time around. Uh, Misfortune Leona should be a, probably a good lane into Kaisa Nautilus, but I think that both sides have some opportunity to go for all in there or just let their supports roam. I haven't seen a whole lot of support roaming this series, so I would expect that uh given that uh we will see junglers that can hopefully gank or at least get something off of trying to go towards the bot side focus uh but the kindred coming right back for delilah looked really good in game number three yep yep definitely and looks like they're just gonna go for it yet again with the kindred locked in this time other side it's gonna be kazix picked up i mean uh, Ryuji looked really good on the Kha'Zix as well, able to delete some targets, despite, you know, trying to go for some place yet uh, again in the game too, where fortunately it did not work out uh, 1v1s that ended up being 1v2s, so it was still successful and they're still going to go for it. It's still a pick comp that, uh, and skirmish comp that Air are going for, and that's what they specialize in, so definitely go for it. And the, uh, Mega Gaming Unknown, uh, however, they're just going for straight up team fight comp yet again. It worked out well for them this uh, in, the, in the past game, but... They still, I still think they have a lot to clean up with regards to team fights and stuff like that because uh, the last time they got jumped on again and again by the set. I would honestly just ban the set at this point. Yeah, I mean, it <laughs> looked pretty good even in the loss. I think that it was a lot coming out from the top lane there. Uh, and I think that Bobby Rob, given the set, 
can uh, just continue to do the same thing over and over. And I mean, if it is set, then this is basically the same comp from game number two. I mean, the airs comp game number two was set Kaisa, Nautilus, Kha'Zix, Zoe. They could still pick all of those champions, but it looks like it'll be the Darius. Whoa. Blind pick Darius. That's an extremely brave thing to do, especially against a Kindred who can, you know, deny his ultimate uh, right off the bat. So, uh, Bobby Rob, this time he's going to stamp his foot down. He's like, all right, guys, I set things up for you last time. Uh, it didn't work out. This time I am going to be the main carry. I am the captain now, is what Bobby Rob is trying to say here. I'm not going to put words in his mouth, but <laughs> look at me. I'm the, car I'm the <laughs> carry now. <laughs> 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 yeah, and, and I think that uh, with that being set up, it, it was a lot of carrying coming out anyways from Bobby Rob, but this time around, Darius, I'm expecting it will be Ghost instead of Teleport, so we'll see if that ends up affecting the flank potential, but right now I can see a bunch of targets that are very dunkable. Uh, I think Leona and Wukong pretty tanky at the front end of a fight. Uh, but Kaisa's got at least a decent damage to take that. And the Vex pick coming in for Omega Gaming Unknown looking pretty spicy. I mean, this is all team fight comp. Vex extremely good when it comes to the when it comes to that. It's basically a clash of styles right here between Omega Gaming Unknown and Aerie Sports Revival. Well, team fight can out. Well, skirmishes win out. Well, Omega Gaming they have to be able to reach those mid game team fights in order to be able to be successful. Meanwhile, Air Esports Survival they've been showing a lot of success. And are we going for the Annie? We are going for the Annie. Wow, Church of Annie here, LS celebrating <laughs> somewhere in Korea. But it's gonna be Annie picked up for the side of Air Esports Survival. I guess following Kryan's Kryan's footsteps in Worlds. Yeah, and I think that the Annie is a great answer to all of this engage coming out. Leona, Wukong, and especially Vex. You want to be able to lock down the Vex before the resets start to come out. So I think that the Annie is a great response. And I think that we'll be looking back towards the top side of the map. We've gotten towards the bottom side a little bit more in games two and three. But I think that uh, we should be highlighting this time around. The top side matchup should actually have some solo kills in it, Darius Wukong should be a, enough of an all-in at level 6 that I think that they will both be trying to win that. I think it's skill, so if you can win that matchup, then that's going to trickle down towards the mid lane, which will trickle down towards the bot lane. And uh, last game was the first one where I think that there was no soul given over, and I'm, I'm interested to see how the Drake priority will change as we adapt through this series. I think Air Esports Survival will want to be, you know, trying to get those rigs as often as possible because they're the ones with the snowball comp at this point. On the other side, Wukong may have a bit of a slow early game, but will have definitely a devastating uh, mid to late game, especially with the team fights. I'm not sure if he'll be able to solo kill the Darius, especially if Darius decides to go with the Ghost instead. At level 3, he's going to have a very hard time. Of course, Wukong does have his clone to be able to get away from messy situations, but he... It's still, you know, if you make one mistake against the Darius, the lane pretty much get, uh, gets taken over by him, and it's so hard to get back into the game. So we'll have to see what Eye Patch Mickey can do to mitigate Bobby Rob, because if Bobby Rob doesn't get ahead, well, it's still a Darius, and he doesn't scale very well to the late game. He can get kited super easily by Vex and by Kindred. So it's definitely up to Air Esports Survival to get things rolling. Yeah, and I'm looking back through the match history at the Darius plays for bobby rob there's been five games this split where it's been a darius for bobby rob and three of them are looking like a solid carry and the, the other two are looking like not so great so i think that this is kind of a coin flip a roll of the dice perhaps to see whether it's going to be the winning darius that just takes over the entire game or if it's going to be the darius that's just kind of hanging out there and watching as the rest of the team dies. Yep, yep. <laughs> there we go. Will's in the chat already saying that the reverse sweep incoming. I mean, definitely is possible. If Omega Gaming Unknown managed to pull it off, it'll be quite a feat, uh, especially after being down so badly and getting dominated in the first and second game. Even to an extent, the third game when it, when it came to the latter portions. Still able to clutch it up in the end. 
And this time, as again, we said, it's Clash of Styles, team fight versus Skirmish. Who's going to win out? I'd still put my bets on Air Esports Survival, but I wouldn't be surprised if Omega Gaming Unknown will manage to find an opportunity to come back. Yeah, and I, I think that both of these sides, uh, despite the fact that they play out differently, the early game looks very similar. You got mages in the mid lane, you got hard engaged supports, you got marksmen, you got aggressive junglers that want to go for taking more farm than the enemy jungler and we could see skirmishes in the jungle over that and then we've got bruiser top laners that like to fight each other so i think that there's going to be a lot of back and forth and uh maybe even more kills coming through than we had last game if that's even possible i mean more kills uh more work for you i guess tiger but it would be super exciting definitely if you see a very intense back and forth game between these two but, you know, I want the clean back and forth, right? I don't want a back and forth because someone's making dumb decisions. So, Area Sports Survival and Omega Gaming Unknown, hopefully they can give us a really good show this time. Yeah, put down your wards. Give us some 1v1s that aren't going to turn into a 4v1 immediately. Make sure that you know where everyone is on the map. Track your cooldowns. And hopefully we'll have an exciting game number four. We're going to take a quick intermission. But when we come back, we've got Omega Gaming Unknown versus Air Esports Revival. Don't go anywhere.
welcome back everyone to the rift we've got game number four omega gaming unknown will be on the blue side on the red side we've got airy sports revival and the series has its life renewed man i don't think i've ever molded that part on broadcast before tiger i think i've been affected by tds too much after casting uh, with him for a while yeah <laughs> just be like that do be like that. I don't. I don't mean to offend Air Esports, but you know, I definitely expect better from them with the performance that they gave in the first two games. You know, but mistakes definitely happen. Sometimes in the moment, you just don't think so. Uh, but this time, they definitely do have to think because, well, uh, they have a snowballing comp versus a comp that will get better later the game goes, as we saw in the last time. So hopefully, they can avoid the mistakes they've. Uh, they made in the last game and are able to improve on it. Economical on this Annie is going to be a lot more interesting. This time, the only way he can go in is if he has flash. If he has flash, so probably going to be a lot more tempered in this game. I, that's what I assume at least. Yeah, and I looked back into the archives to see that this almost the exact same comp has come out from Air Esports Revival earlier in the season. The only change being that there was a Kane before where now there is a Kha'Zix. But the they were bad. able to smash that game. They won by a landslide. They got 10-1 and one for Bobby Rob, And it just was an entire team uh, uh -oh. big win. Eyepatch oh, making no. make in trouble here. Bobby Rob already forcing out the flash for nothing in the top lane. Here's the ghost. I used the ghost. Fair enough. Yeah, he did, he did use the ghost. So level one already going in favor of Bobby Rob. And we've seen again and again how dominant this guy can be in the laning phase, at least. Not to mention the team fights. Apparently, Bobby Rob does it all. He can be dominant in team fights. He can be dominant in lane. And he show, he's uh, just showing his dominance right now. So hook lands. Level two, it may be a little bit too deep, though. The tower shots going down on the core going to be a, enough to make the trade just about even. Oreo murder with a little bit of extra health. Uh, but the rest of them, about 60%, should be able to heal back up with some potions. Uh, but both junglers topside, so not too much danger coming there just yet. I'm surprised that it's actually Bui, Dai, and Kord that's able to get the push and the level 2 advantage over their opponents. Considering, you know, Misfortune has longer range than the Kai'Sa and still unable to beat her out in this laning phase. You'd think the opposite would happen. It said invade already! Ryuji looking for the solo kill in the jungle, but realizes I am Patch Mickey may be on the way. Delilah looking to turn oh. around. Flash for flash. Delilah dropping low, but first blood goes over to I Patch Mickey. And that means it's just a little bit too deep for Ryuji trying to go into the enemy jungle. That was very unfortunate. I think uh, Delilah was able to get the smite and the kill off onto the Gromp, so he's able to gain the health from both the smite and the Gromp dying. And ended up, it could, uh, Ryuji went for the all-in auto-attack play and it just didn't break out. So, uh, Delilah is going to be benefiting off that failed invade and she's going to be ahead in the matchup. And if you're a Kindred, being ahead is exactly where you want to be. Yeah, already up three camps, able to take that first scuttle. It looks like Ryuji um, may be well. just back on the war path, though. Looking for a gank in the bot lane. Good control ward. Core dropping pretty low. But Oreo Murderer may be the target. Core going to have to shield this one up. King Civil going to almost fall here. Going to try to heal. Will be enough to take down the enemy support, but it's a trade one for one. Oreo Murderer will survive, but the wave is going in favor of Bu Yu Dai. Uh, is it is it pushing towards his lane? If so, that's gonna be a very hard to come back from, at least from the side of uh from the side from the side of King Civil, unfortunately. Oh uh, yeah, the wave is pushing away for him. So it's gonna be Kaisa denying a lot of CS from his opponent in that regard. Even though it was a one for one trade, I would still give that win over to the side of Air Esports Revival in the bot lane. And really good gank after that failed invade from Yuji. Yeah, and I think that Delilah is still able to keep this camp lead. Uh, but the other scuttle crab going over is pretty good. Bobby Rob looking for the all in here. Potentially has flash available. Oh. Going to be able to get the decimating smash for the kill. It's a solo in the top lane. And the hook is going to connect here in the bot side. King Civil going to be in trouble. Going to take the passive auto. Flash oh, forward. What? For Guy, but it's not going to be enough damage to Lila here trying to turn around here comes the teleport Oreo murder as well core already gonna oh, fall. No. now it's the fear on the view you die and there's no way out of this one it's two kills going back the way of Omega gaming unknown Omega gaming unknown played that super well and view you die he just greeted so hard trying to get the kill onto King Civil but King Civil just barely 
barely able to get out of auto attack range from the Kaisa and because of that able to win out with the teleport from Demo coming down to the bot lane. Fortunately, uh, Economical not able to respond at all to the play and ended up being an outnumbered moment and well, it's just the bot lane going down. So, unfortunate for the side of Air Esports Revival after things went super well for them in the last gank. Now they're gonna lose them, they're gonna lose two kills, and they're gonna lose the first dragon, going over to Omega Gaming Unknown. Yeah, already a thousand gold lead about six minutes into the game. Really the only bright spot on the map right now is Bobby Rob able to take an early CS advantage. Eye patch Mickey still being zoned off the wave. Bobby Rob level six now could look for another all in. Now it's going to be the cyclone already popped by Eye Patch Mickey. Gonna try to have enough to disengage. The dunk comes through. Ooh. Flash decimating smash, but it's not going to have quite enough damage. Can the bleed tick down? I don't think it will be enough to finish off the kill. Eye Patch Mickey will survive for the Oh moment. no, <laughs> she's right. He's on the gank. Going to take up the first turret shot. Going to have to tank up another. Could be in trouble oh, here. No. One more to finish him off it's a trade of kills here comes the back oh. though demo going to show up bobby rob going to try to get some heals off the decimating smash but delilah going to leap forward maybe one more vault will be enough going to be more heals coming through but it won't matter delilah able to clean up the second kill and the response is once again there from omega gaming unknown this feels like a completely different Omega Gaming unknown from the last few games that we've seen them. They're making cross map plays that are super successful, are able to react just in time, and well, despite the targets, uh, despite uh, the lanes being targeted, the laners that are being targeted just managing to last long enough for reinforcements to come by and finish the job. So, really good stuff from them, and so far this Vex is really paying off for the side of Omega Gaming unknown. Yeah, a lot of good roams coming out from Demo, working well with Delilah right now. But the gold has actually almost stabilized as uh, it's Air Esports Revival able to take multiple plates in the bot lane and just CSing their way back into this game. It's a dead even on gold now. Uh, and Ryuji looking once again to try to find a gank. The stun won't be up for economical though, so it looks like that will just about do it for the mid lane. Yep, that that will do it. But at least, I mean, there's there's still a trade off for what uh, demo is doing with the roams. Economical is able to get a big CS lead for himself. Still, definitely a strong contender to deal with. Right now, there might be end up a mid duo skirmish in bot lane. Ooh, nice Demo going to drop to 300 HP. Oh. Now Delilah going to try to engage, but Ryuji never left. Ryuji going to have to wait out in the Lamb's Respite. Delilah going to get the heal from King Civil, getting the heal from the ult, flashing forward. Demo going to try oh. to find the heal. Delilah able to outplay for the kill. Four going to be in a troublesome spot now. Economical and Bu Yudai going to try to save Private Ryan, but I don't think they're going to have any luck this time around. Oreo Murderer killing his fellow support, and that's two for zero in favor of Omega gaming unknown hey mega gaming unknown this time they're the ones really in the driver's seat this time able to get so many skirmish wins for themselves and it's delilah and demo just outplaying their opponents across the map with ryuji trying to go for these it feels like they're desperate invades trying to get something done right now zero three one not a happy kazix at the moment as oh my gosh it's just it's just looking like a bit of a disaster for Air Esports Revival right now, but Omega Gaming Unknown are playing super well. Yeah, they're, they're just being the windshield that goes splat to the bug. The bug tries to attack it, but it's no good because it's just too much follow-up coming through. Every time there's a fight, there's more members showing up on the end of it for Omega Gaming Unknown, and they're just in the right place at the right time. We'll see if they can continue this pace. It's been good for the last two games, but the game three was very back and forth, so if, if this is anything like that game, and the, there should be some fourth to go for Air Esports Revival, so we'll keep an eye on it. Yeah, if this does go to a game five, I honestly wouldn't mind seeing a, a Kindred ban from Air Esports. Oh wait, they're going for it! Solar Flare, Bu Yu Dai going to force to heal, oh and the bullet gosh. not able to finish off the kill. Oreo Murderer dropping very low, Eclipse is down, down. One more auto attack will do it. Bu Yu Dai going to pick up the kill. King Civil going to be in trouble as well, going to look to finish oh. off the kill. It's not going to happen. And here comes the Rift Herald have fight. There will be no reinforcements this time around. I patch Mickey going to pick up. Uh, 
the kill on to Bobby Rob, but it's traded back one for one around the rift. Harold Pitt, economical looking to continue on to demo. Not going to quite find the dive, but it, oh, here it is. A flash stun. Not going to be enough. The turret shot going to be tanked up. Demo going to try to find the rest of the Ooh. damage. Not going to quite be enough. Oreo Murderer now in the area to make sure Demo is going to survive. Ryuji is still on the hunt. Eyes are activated. The radar is up. Here comes Ryuji with the flash finishes off Demo. Oreo Murderer still looking to turn around. Going to be able to find Eclipse. the shoot daybreak. Economical going into the stasis. Not going to matter. Oreo Murderer going to pick up the kill. But it's one for one on the late trade after the fight oh my gosh these skirmishes just happening one after none I, I don't even see the conditions of the skirmish happening i just see the skirmish happen and boom everyone just tries to go for it right away in the bot lane it was a great outplay by bu Dai and core to get the kill king civil fortunately wasn't able to get anything done but the next dragon is going to go over to the side of uh omega gaming unknown this time they have a much more impactful drake the ocean drake uh for for themselves for the two ocean teams definitely very thematic <laughs> for this game four right now it's not even game five though but the potential is definitely there as omega gaming unknown look to be bringing this one back but Harry sports revival they still have some fight in them left especially this bot lane it seems like he's checking the long rush depth charge comes down king civil could be in trouble but core is almost fallen already this stopwatch is you die going with the killers <laughs> one back but it's king civil with the double kill and oreo murderer is the only survivor in the bot lane 2v2 economical may be caught out here it's going to be the bear dropped for the stun and that's all it takes to disengage and economical will survive the mid lane that's so worth it definitely for misfortune down there in the bot lane already completing the eclipse for himself and uh the shutdown able to buy him that but well it's still gonna be the cs lead for it, the side of buu die who has been playing out the lane super well despite some 2v2s not completely going there in their favor just like the last one the fact that they have this big of a lead means that they have so much that they can fall back on and the gold is still even just from the cs leads of these teams that, that our esports survival has yeah and rift herald is in the inventory of ryuji right now so we'll see if they can get into the lead actually as they could get a couple turret plates maybe even try to find an entire turret i think oreo murderer has the intel that there may be something awry in this uh bot side jungle the sweeper yeah, coming through the rift herald going to come into the bot lane king civil backing all the way off to the tier two Good respect being paid right now, but here comes the collapse. Oh, they're here fighting, comes, they're oh, fighting. Everyone's going to be here. Solar Flare already goes down. Ryuji going to be slowed up. We're not going to find any damage just yet. Cyclone coming down onto Core. Core not going to have much of a way out of this one. Turret goes down, but it's traded for the support. And that means that it's going to be the disengage. But what's Bobby Rob getting on the top side in counter? You could all the plates. Oh Bobby no. Find the kill. Maybe going to be able to do so. And even survives. Oreo murder finding the CC. Delilah picking up the kill. And that means it's two for zero in the bot side. But the trades are coming through in form of plates. Yeah, and it's, it's going to be. It's going to end up being Air Esports Survival. Just getting the lead off that one. All those plates going down means a bigger lead. And Bobby Rob, he's just benefiting from the teleport that I Patch Picky did onto the bot lane. Sure, they got two kills. But Bobby Rob just got so much more gold infused onto this direction. and he's going to be such a big threat when the mid game comes. Oh, yeah, good ward here coming out onto Ryuji. Could be a trouble oh, no. in the escape. Shadow Surge missed already, but the Shield of Daybreak can't oh. miss. Here comes the stun over the wall. The bear is down. Economical could be in trouble for that bear, though. Delilah able to pick up the kill in the mid lane. One for zero, and Ryuji escapes, but it costs the life of the mid laner. Yeah, definitely. Economical, unfortunately, had to bail, had to try and bail out his jungler, but end up giving a side. Now he does have a teleport, possibly could go for a flank play. He does not have Tibbers, however, which is the main problem facing the side of uh, say Air Esports Survival right now. So the mid lane turret is going to get bursted down. There's nothing they really can do about yeah, it. They're going to go for more. The stuns come through. Core going to be able to survive. Finds oh, the hook oh. wall, but it's not enough. Demo able to finish off the kill. And that means that another pick goes down, and the tier two could be under five. Five men strong, 
for Omega Gaming Unknown, but the wave has finally been cleared, which means they will have to back off. Bobby Rob may be feeling aggressive here, pinging on towards trying to take out the support potentially. Maybe going to look to go forward. Has the ghost, has the flash. <laughs> Able to finish the recall, though. That means Oreo Murderer will survive. He yeah, definitely will be surviving. And right now, Air Esports Survival is still in a bad spot, I'd say. Especially since, you know, when things are even, when you have the snowball comp, it's not going to look good. Even though they're keeping things even, they're actually technically behind because of the scale amount of scaling that their opponents have. Especially Delilah on this Kindred is doing so much work for his team, catching out Ryuji again and again and again as we see things going down over to the bot side of the map as teams they want to fight for this next dragon it's going to be the ocean it's going to be the ocean drake you wouldn't want to miss out on that one for either side yeah and delilah also on four stacks now with the extended range this oh, is a great death control rush. world the death brush coming out and right now not going to be challenged just yet uh, meanwhile, it's iPad Mickey just split pushing the top side. Uh, this is a Drake that you can just give if you yeah, they are could. gaming unknown. There's no reason why they couldn't just trade it for the Rift Tail, try to get a turret down, and uh, extend the gold lead, which is right now is very close to even. But uh, they could make a turret go down, maybe even two. You die in core, maybe gonna look up, uh, they're gonna try to find out what's up with the Rift Herald, but the voice connect uh, uh core going to show up oreo murderer may be the oh, target i think i hasn't been picked up yet delilah will get to it but what will it cost we're going to try oh, to the peel going to be enough damage economical dropping very low but it's one traded back ryuji able to pick one ryuji looking to take oh. the entire break, flashing over the wall for the shutdown able to take one it's Three for three so far. Bu you die gonna try to survive. Eye patch Mickey should be able to clean that one up. A four for three in favor of Omega Gaming Unknown. They pick up the Rift Herald as well. That positioning is really good from Delilah, just able to continue to peel back. Meanwhile, Eye patch Mickey peeling for his teammate, ma making sure he knows that Delilah is pretty much the strongest player on the map at this point. Demo, unfortunately, if he had the stopwatch, I think he could have been able to survive that play that he made to try and get onto the back line and you know cause more chaos be able to delete a lot more people once he has his zanyas he's gonna be a lot harder to deal with as ryuji he's going for another invade yeah no leap available the root comes out finally leap comes down was able to smite away the blue buff and should be able to get out alive so a risky business but going to be a, a little bit of a houdini act from ryuji Yep, Ryuji managing to get away with that one. Finally, it feels like forever getting a play off and not having it blown up in his face. Right now, 4-3-2 and two on the Kha'Zix, so not too bad going for him. Hasn't died yet since the big fight that happened there in the Rift Herald. He's going to be super uh, happy with that one, especially with how much of a disaster the early game was for him. The fact that he's back in the game definitely is the boost for morale, but Delilah is still pretty much ahead. Yeah, and uh, Delilah has most of the gold advantages for Omega Gaming Unknown, but the solo lanes are in a pretty good spot right now for Air Esports Revival. I mean, if you take a look at the individual gold, 700 for Bobby Rob, you got uh, about 1,300 in favor of Delilah, and you got maybe we're having a fight breakout, so we better uh, check out what's going on here. It's turret going down, so that's not a fight. Uh, mid lane around. about 700 economical maybe in trouble oreo murder going to go in with the zenith blade going to have the stun available it's the bear down on the two is going to try to finish off eye patch mickey not going to be able to do so quite yet Ooh. it's a couple of summons duking it out and it looks like tibbers will be able to finish off the rift herald and that's going to be enough for the disengage from omega gaming unknown Main gaming unknown to take the lead back with that turret down. They almost decided to go for attack onto Annie, but decided to not burn everything because they realized that the entire enemy team was already heading towards that top side. And right now, OG unknown, it's their game to it's their game to throw, honestly, if if it comes down to it. Ruji! Oh, oh no. On award. Walks straight to his death, and it's King Civil there with the waiting arms to pick it up. Five, four, and eight now. It's starting to feel like you're doing a lot of damage, and I really like the lethality build coming out against such a squishy comp. I mean, Darius is really your only front line that can sustain. Yeah, I mean, it definitely makes sense since the Misfortune Ultimate is also super good with lethality. 
Plus, you have the consistent damage already with the Kindred. So you don't really have to worry about it in that regard. And speaking of Kindred, uh, just going to make a small mark check to see how many Delilah already has. He already has four. So she has reached the, the point where Kindred can start kiting out people, can be doing so much damage. I think we reached that point probably a while ago. But And Delilah is doing a lot of good work since the early game on this Kindred, just outplaying Ryuji again and again. We'll see if he's able to do it this time. As right now, the dragon should be up in one minute. It was given over, but I don't think uh, Omega Gaming Unknown are going to give this one up this time. This time, they have the teleport on Ipatch Mickey. They have the teleport on Demo. And they have all the uh, all the tools they need to be able to win out on this team fight. Yeah, and this fight is much riskier because if it goes the distance, then Baron could be the prize on the back end of the Drake fight. So if you can get two objectives for zero, then that can be a big swinging point in this game. The lead's only 2,000 right now, but it could explode or be exploded depending on who is able to take the fight. And right now it looks like the early control of the river going in favor of Air Esports Revival. Bobby Rob getting chunked out there a little bit by demo. Teleport's the coming the flank. Teleport on the flank, as you say, and here comes the Cyclone, potentially bullet time coming in, oh! going to be able to chunk out members, economical falling very low, Delilah able to pick up the first kill of the fight, Ipatch Mickey going to fall as well, though, Buu die trying to do the work, doesn't quite have the damage needed, though, Demo on the back line, gonna have to flash away, Bobby Robin, Ryuji still alive, it's 3v2 on the map, Ryuji going to be chunked out once again, though, and I think that this has to be the disengage for Aerie Sports Revival, as Omega Game and Run no, take it 3-2 and the Drake. Oh my gosh, Air Resources Revival unfortunately falling in that regard. They were just right at the perfect... Uh, it was right at the moment. They tried to engage immediately onto the Wukong while they separate from the rest of the team. Unfortunately, they were in a choke point. Perfect for misfortune. King Civil had the absolute best opportunity to use the bullet time. And he pulled it off exactly right away. The full duration was out too. They weren't able to get onto him. And when they did eventually get onto him, Delilah and De Delilah and Demo were just able to clean things up. Yeah, and uh, I think that right now we're seeing the team fight power that comes out from this comp that was drafted by Omega Gaming Unknown. And when you've got an assassin sort of comp where you're trying to find picks and take out one person at a time then the 5v5s just don't look it quite as good and bobby rob still looking to find reset for more but you guys could be in trouble the fear comes down oh. ryuji gonna have to dash away but i think that that's going to do it for the fight king civil laying down the bullet time making sure to get some chunk on the enemy team maybe enough to start out the baron yeah, they're going for it right now. Ryuji is so low health. They see that this is happening, but can they respond? I patch Mickey. He does not have his teleport. That's the major thing. Meanwhile, here comes Bobby uh, Rob. On the top does. Side. So going to mark though. Bobby Rob could be in trouble. Solo down. down. Island forces him to flash shadow, so he's oh. not going to connect. Core goes forward with the flash, tries Economical. to find death stars, but it's only under one. Economical trying to finish off Delilah, but here comes the Lamb's respite. Yeah. Bobby Rob with a big. Hook, and it's going to be the shutdown going over to economical king civil will fall everyone's gonna fall a double kill going over to ryuji and it's a four for one in favor of air esports revival straight onto the baron they go i patch mickey nearby may look for some kills but going to be at his own peril and it's going to be the baron continued to be aggroed economical dangerously low here but i don't think that it's going to be any problem as i patch mickey is zoned off by bobby rob and baron goes over to air esports revival that was a central fight for air esports revival to win and they did it off the bat if they realized they, it was a 4v5 honestly i patch mickey without any teleport had nowhere to no way to get into the fight honestly king civil did not have his ultimate either uh, just has it up now and the fact that they were they didn't have the tools to be able to 5v5 the way they wanted to means that air esports revival found the perfect opportunity to go in and mess things up uh on the other hand they tried to isolate the fights on the side of omega gaming unknown they tried to go onto the dash immediately unfortunately he was able to get a, get away with the flash and from there it was just core setting things up for the rest of his team to finish things off and the fight went in favor of Air Esports Revival. Now they have the Baron. They have so much pressure going into this. Both teams pretty much neck on neck at this point. Yeah, and I think that Bobby Rob surviving for so long in that last fight was the critical point. The Lamb's Respite had to come down because Delilah was about to 
fall. But Bobby Rob was able to step into it, able to find the multi-man uh, hook, and then oh. uh, Ryuji blows up Demo. Wow, it only takes a second. And Ryuji on the flank able to take a kill down 5v4 on the map. How much can they get? They've got the Baron buff. They've got the wave in the mid lane. That's one tower down. They will be looking for more. Ryuji going to be on the flank from the side. Economical has the stun ready, but the wave is gone. And I think that that means that we'll get at least a moment of peace before the next wave arrives. Yeah. Uh, I've been hounding on Ryuji this entire game for that early game and the mistake and a uh, few of the mistakes he made trying to go for invades. But now things are pretty much equal. The early game basically did not happen for this Kazakh. He is super strong right now and he can one shot any squishy that comes near him. Demo and King Civil have to watch out for him, otherwise they're just gonna get blown up immediately. The pressure's on. Spy man here oh, to splash. The flash bear from Economical blows up Delilah before the ult can be used. Buu die into the backline. Going to be Is able it? to find the killer instinct. This could be it. Air Esports revival from a clean house. Able to find four kills. Eyepatch Mickey once again not able to join the fight. And it's 5v1 into the base. And it looks like Air Esports revival with the Baron buff, with the wave, are going to look to take down the Nexus Towers and look to get into game number well, it looks like the Cyclones go down, but that's going to do it. I patch Mickey, the last to fall, and BBC awaits for you. It's Air Esports Revival finishing off the series. Three games to one, an exciting finish for us. And Miles, what a great way to end the day. Yeah, now that was a good way to end the game with the back and forth between these two teams. It wasn't, you know, there wasn't any completely brain dead place that we saw in the game that in game game three uh or rather in game three yeah when air esports really threw a lot of moments this time it was just a good decent back and forth between these two teams showing what they can do and it was just air esports revival finding the exact right opportunity to pounce they did it and they won the game off of it it was a really it was a really big mistake for the side of for the side for the side of mega gaming unknown to go for that baron fight knowing that they were outnumbered and out uh knowing they were outnumbered outgunned and out positioned yeah and i think that that just showed us what we saw all day was that the teams weren't able to necessarily identify when was the right time to take a fight and when was the wrong time to take a fight they just wanted to take every fight and I think the last game was the closest to a clean game that we saw and really exemplified the best of both teams. But in the end, it ended up being Air Esports Revival that were able to find the win, find the 3-1 to one victory overall, and show that they had the what it takes to move on to the semifinals in the bracket. Yep, definitely. Now, Esports Revival, they beat BBC before, albeit with subs. Now they really have to prove themselves. This is like basically almost the final test because BBC are the favorites to win out on this entire tournament with CB Rush being the close second. So if they're able to conquer this stage, this, 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 this beast that is in front of them, then they definitely should feel com comfortable moving on to the grand final. But that's still theoretical, so they still definitely have to play BBC. And we'll see which uh we'll see we'll see which which of them is uh uh which of them is going to which of them is going to move on and that should be a super exciting match honestly. Will I expect a 3-0 from BBC? Kinda yeah, but I think Air Esports Revival have what it takes to fight them. Albeit if they clean up their gameplay a lot and uh you know don't int at certain points in the game where it's super essential not to. <laughs> yeah, and I think that uh. Uh, in closing, we uh, also have the report from Zenigma Reapers taking the 3-0 over Nameless Empire. So they will move on to face CB Rush in the other semifinal. Not sure which one's going to be contested. Uh, and Wookie Monster, can you tell us if we've got an interview lined up? Uh, I mean, at this point, we can probably get one of them. Should we? Yeah, well, we should see if we can get an interview. I think that uh, we were looking at the jungle matchup. As see if we can get Ryuji in here. See if we can get Ryuji in here, yeah. Ryuji. Let's see if we can get him in here. The people... I think my... They're no longer in the voice? All right. Well, we'll just uh, assume that we can't get an interview. Or we'll have a finals interview, definitely. All right. Finals also, interview. 
sure. We'll have to let the teams know to stay in the voice chat if they want to get an interview. Uh, but I think that uh, uh, an entertaining series for us today, to be oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely. And, and really some good stuff coming out from both teams. I didn't have any player on either side that I thought only had bad games. I think everyone had at least one good game. Uh, and, and I think that hopefully for Omega Gaming Unknown, we'll get to see some more from them in the future. Uh, but for Air Esports Revival, uh, a good 3-1 win. And hopefully this gives them all of the insights that they need to improve themselves and give a worthy challenge to BBC going into next week. Definitely, definitely. I mean, I mean this 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 series had everything you want, right? Stomps, throws, uh, close fights, uh, comebacks, uh, uh, back and forwards. It had everything you could possibly want and more. The only thing probably missing was the game five, unfortunately. I'm like, uh, Gaming Unknown wasn't able to bring us there, but they did make it entertaining nonetheless. So we thank them, of course, for participating in Runeterra Academy the second semester. Hopefully, as you said, we'll see them again and hopefully much more improved than last time. All right. Well, that's going to just about do us do it for us in the quarterfinal series for Runeterra Academy Junior Division. We had Omega Gaming Unknown taking one win, but the three goes to Air Esports Revival. I have been Tiger, here with Miles David, Wookie Monster on the production, and for Runeterra Academy, thank you all for joining us. Have a good night. Class dismissed. Thank you.